platform tour. How you guys doing? How's everybody doing? I see you backstagers. I can see you. I see you on my back screen right here too. What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm coming to you from Dallas, Texas. Do you realize today, for if, if this is the first day, your first day here with us, welcome, welcome, welcome. You're in the right spot. We have built this tour in a way where every day is a standalone day in itself. So you don't have to be here every day. Every day you can walk out and you will get exactly what you need to build your platform in the six pillars of building a platform. I'm really, really excited about today. And I just had this aha for everybody. Barbara, be careful. I see you driving. I see you driving. Brian, thanks for all your energy this week. Great to see Nate Scott in the house. One of the things I want you to know is I'm actually coming to you from a place where I spoke today. And I hear something in my background here. I, 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 I'm coming to you from a place where I spoke this morning. And so we had to build a studio here for one day before I go back to Colorado for day seven tomorrow where, where Tim Tebow and Bethany Hamilton will be with us tomorrow on day seven. Super excited about that. But I want you to know that I had this aha and I'm going to share that with you. We have an incredible lineup today and somebody closing it out today that you guys are going to be very, very surprised with here in the studio, here with me. A lot of our speakers are with me today in the studio. Not all of them, but several of them are going to be in the studio with me today. And you guys are in for an incredible treat. So just to remember, this is streaming. We're, we're on tomorrow. This is streaming in our Facebook group, platformcommunity.com. That's the main place, but it's streaming several dozen other places as well. Like the reach of this week is millions of people. It's the biggest thing that we have ever done. The reach of this is millions of people this week. And I'm so excited about that. Um, we're streaming in Spanish. So all of my Spanish speaking backstagers, all of everybody backstage, I'm so glad for all of our VIPs. And this year, not only did we have tens of thousands of English registered, we had tens of thousands of Spanish registered. It's streaming into our groups of several hundred thousand entrepreneurs. 30 of our speakers are streaming it into their Facebook groups, their Facebook pages, their YouTube channels, their Instagram accounts. And it's in English and Spanish. And we have thousands of VIPs in both English and Spanish this year. It's the biggest thing that we've ever done. I'm so excited. At the end today, I do have an iPad Pro that I'm going to be giving away, strategy sessions that we're going to be giving away, and we'll be awarding yesterday's homework assignment winner from yesterday. So make sure that you stay around till the end. Just as a reminder, we're on day five. If I can keep the screen up, we're on day five of our challenge here. Day six, excuse me, sorry, day six, see? It's been crazy. And I want you to know that these speakers, we've still got about half of these speakers left to go. We have six or seven today, a few tomorrow, 12 on Monday. Monday is like a personal development day, but I can guarantee you with our first speaker, that will start today. And all of these speakers are being translated in English and Spanish. I'm so excited because we have so many incredible folks. Hey, down on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, backstage, what's been some of your biggest nuggets that you've learned from the speakers this week? What's been some of the biggest nuggets that you've learned? Drop some comments down below. I want to see the comments down below and let me know. I'm so excited because we're giving 100% of the profits back to charity to help Emmett Smith's organization here in Dallas with underprivileged kids, the Maloof Foundation, and sex trafficking. Children's Hospital is creating a, a mental health program for teenagers because teen suicide is at an all-time high. Model Citizen Fund is providing backpacks with hundreds of items for the homeless. SCORE, we're building a program with SCORE that will help reach millions of minority business owners, giving them resources that they need. Grant Cardone Foundation, as you heard this week, sent several special forces into Afghanistan to rescue families out of Afghanistan. It serves to help 
kids that no longer have a father in the home and Floyd Mayweather helping the homeless and underprivileged folks. We're giving 100% of the profits back to charity. So while we're helping you build your platform, we're building their platform as well. And I want you to know that we've still got today, we've still got today as day six. Today's your first day, you're okay, you're in the right place. Tomorrow is day seven. And then Monday is day eight. And we've decided Monday, you will see a little special gift that we're gonna give to you on Monday. Monday will be, today or Monday will be the biggest days that we have. Like I believe that today, tomorrow, and Monday, every day is just continuing to grow. Monday is where we focus on you. So Monday is our bonus day. And we've still got several speakers. And then Tuesday, for anybody that missed any day, we are recapping all 40 speakers in 60 minutes, giving you the biggest nugget from each of the 40 plus speakers. And then we're giving you an, a, a worksheet that day. You have to be live to get, to get all of this. The worksheet that day will have you leave with the right strategies for you to implement. And then that day we will be giving $50,000, back up here guys, $50,000 of prizes away that day. I'm really, really excited. How do you earn the prizes? Here's the ways you earn the prizes. Number one, you're here live every day. Every day you're here counts. Number two, you do the homework every day. That takes you one step greater to your destiny. Number three, you actually tag people. You tag people, and, you, and the number of people you tag counts as points for you. We're going to give you a tracker on Sunday of documenting all this. And number four, you share this on your stream. Yesterday, we had hundreds and hundreds, maybe a 1,000 people sharing this to their pages as well. And it's really easy, you just click share now to friends. This is the biggest needle mover for how you will win some of those prizes on Tuesday as we recap all eight days in 60 minutes. And so I'm excited guys, I'm very excited. We're doing it even bigger, we can get rid of these two next. Uh, we're doing it bigger, I've already uh, covered that. So here's what I want you to know. This is the last thing I want you to know before I bring our first speaker up. A platform is a raised and elevated surface. This is my definition. This is not Webster's. A raised or elevated surface on which people, you, take a stand. A place where your message, your impact, and your income is amplified for a purpose greater than yourself. This entire week has been about building your platform so you can control the microphone and change our world. The wrong people, like Damon John said, and it's a few, but the wrong people control the microphone and are making a ne negative, fear-based, divisive voice in this world. And we need you controlling the microphone. We need you controlling the microphone. And so that's what this is all about. We've helped our students reach in the last three years almost 100 million people and generate half a billion dollars. And in the last year, we've worked with some of the biggest thought leaders out there and helped them, in addition, generate half a billion dollars in revenues. Half a billion dollars in revenues on top of the half a billion, or excuse me, a quarter of a billion dollars in revenues. And so the things that we're teaching you this week are out of this world. And here is the lie that you've been told. One thing can help you build your platform. One thing, tactically speaking. I think you and the voice and the power you have inside, that one thing is the most important. But tactically speaking, it's not one thing. And when you try to build your platform on one thing, it comes crumbling down. And this whole week has been about the six pillars to building your platform. And every day I bring you speakers 
in each of these six pillars so you can walk away with the strategy every day in each of the six pillars. And on Tuesday, I will break down all of the nuggets that the speakers did and have you choose one per pillar on Tuesday in our recap training. But the foundation of it is you. Damon John yesterday said, if you don't take care of you, all of the strategies and tactics don't matter if you don't take care of you. And so today, I will bring you a powerhouse lineup of speakers. Every one of these speakers have spoken to one of those or multiple of those six pillars. What I'm about to say, I haven't said all week. I was walking over here listening to that voice inside saying, what is it that everybody across the world needs to hear today? And I wanna know where you're chiming in from. In the chat, drop it on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, backstage, Spanish speaking, where are you chiming in from? Do you realize that we have the number, the enough people that are a part of this week that could go make a massive dent in our world if they took building their platform seriously? And here's the other thing I want you to know. I didn't realize this. This week, the speakers that I brought to you are six-figure platform builders, meaning they've made six figures, hundreds of thousands, I brought you seven figure, millions of dollars, eight figure, tens of millions of dollars. I brought you today and throughout this week, I brought you nine figure business owners. And I've also brought you 10 figure business owners. There isn't anything that has happened this year that has brought you other people. Why does that matter to you? That matters because you're learning from people who are just a little bit in front of you. But you're also learning from people who might be a lot in front of you, and that's okay because I wanna plant the dream of what's possible. Today, I'm coming from an event from two Midwestern boys who had this idea to go impact the lives of people, and now they've built a half a billion dollar company, and they're gonna be joining us today. There's some of the guests who are gonna be joining us today, but I'm excited today because Garrett J. White, my buddy, is about to kick us off and get you out of your seat, like be fully present for him. I'm so stoked to have Jack and John here on creating great products and how they built them. They'll be in the studio with me. Excited to have Jesse Ecker teach you how to generate six-figure days. Stormy Wellington is in the house today. Uh, she, what she shares today was the most packed session at Traffic and Conversion this year because of what she shared there. And I asked her, I want you to share it. She'll be in the studio. Excited to have Julie Stowen in the studio and Brad Sumrock today, or she will be here virtually and Brad Sumrock in the studio today talking about what I believe is one of the missing elements that many of you are facing today. This is our lineup today. This is our lineup. I am stoked. Are you stoked? Are you excited? Who's excited? Let me see it backstage. Let me see it backstage. Turn your cameras on backstage. Come on. Turn your cameras on. Turn your cameras on. It's Saturday. I get it. We're going to talk starting with a guy that I wanted to kick it off around how to build and lead a movement you must first become, whoo, I got goosebumps even reading it, the message of the movement. Now listen, he's going to stir you. He's going to make you uncomfortable. And if we're not uncomfortable, if we're not uncomfortable, we're going to sit in our comfort zone for the rest of our life and die with our message in us. There is nobody I would rather have kicking off day six than my buddy, Mr. Garrett. Jay White Garrett, you there, buddy? Oh, yeah, brother. Excited to be here with you. Thank you so much for bringing me to the mix. Excited. You guys can see me. You're good to go? Yeah, you you're ready, bro. Rock and roll. It's yours, baby. The stage is yours. All right. Well, here we go. So we're going to get uh, go ahead and start my clock on this side so we know. First off, uh, huge, huge, huge thanks to Pete for being able to have us here, put all this together. Uh, for those who have never run an event, never tried to run a large event uh, in person or virtual, 
the detail alone that it requires and the stress to put something together at this magnitude uh, is beyond comprehension for most people. So huge, huge appreciation to Pete for his big heart, for constantly caring, for the way he cares about his children, the way he cares about you. Uh, it's the only reason I would be part of this on a Saturday, breaking away from my kids uh, to be part of this. So I'm, I'm going to get started and get into it with you. This is not going to be uh, just a motivational conversation. Uh, there's a lot of motivation you can get for free on the YouTube. You can get it on Instagram. You get it on Facebook. My name is Gary J. White. I'm the founder of Wake Up Warrior as well as the co-founder of DKW Styling. Uh, my wife and I run training systems and guide through product services, experiences, software, uh, hundreds of thousands of individuals around the world and have over 55,000 clients directly inside of our companies that either in the hair industry or inside of the business space. Um, I'm, and I got asked to come talk about how we built this over the last 10 years. And it came down to one simple thing that I want you to see on the screen right now, which is to build and lead a movement, you must first become the message of the movement. The greatest obstacle for you when it comes to being able to be a messenger and build any platform, the, frankly, the platforms have already been built. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, the technology side of platforming has already been built. And with the rage, a number of people coming onto the platforms over and over and over again, the challenge comes down to one simple obstacle, and the obstacle is this. Uh, you lie. Like, like, I don't know how else to tell this to you, except for you fucking lie. You look out on social media and you look at what everybody's doing and you think that that's what you need to do. You look at individuals who are 10 years down the road from you and you think that that's how you should show up now. And the only way that you have a voice is to actually be something that you're not. There's so much concern around being able to coach, guide, and inspire. But when you come down to it, in the game of messaging and building platforms, the greatest obstacle is not technology, it's not having the platform, it's not knowing what to say, it's not the messaging. It comes down to one simple thing, which is you are a liar. You don't tell the whole truth. You share what you think you should share. You share what makes you comfortable you talk about what sits in the pocket of what is acceptable. You share what is politically correct. You share what you think is spiritually correct. You share for all of the wrong reasons. And until I got this, it didn't matter how much I listened. It didn't matter how many events I sat in. It didn't matter how many webinars I attended. It didn't matter how many workshops I went to. It didn't matter how many Saturdays like you right now sitting on this platform watch this. You can consume all this shit all day long. You can take a thousand pages of notes. You can put all of the mechanical systems in place. You can listen to every trainer today and everyone that's come before and everybody that comes after. And if you don't stop fucking lying to yourself and with your message to the world and more importantly, lying to God, There are some people who want to build platforms because they're trying to get paid, and I can appreciate that because that's the end result. But I'm going to have you consider that the purpose behind why you're trying to build must be beyond per profit. But the problem is, is that most of us are in so much scarcity when God begins to call us into the ministry of a message. And that ministry of message comes across so different to so many people. There is a purpose, and that purpose is there is a voice that has called you and spoken to you and said, I need you to start saying the following. And here's where it gets crazy, is that the voice doesn't ask you to talk about all the cool shit you've done. Do you know where the voice asks you to start? It asks you to start in what I call the pit. The book of Genesis is an interesting book. Whether you're Christian or not, it's still interesting. First three verses of the book of Genesis are very revealing. Most people skip right over them. Verse one, God speaks about the idea that there was the heavens and the earth. Verse two is profoundly powerful and more than most people could ever recognize. All creation in verse two began in the dark. The creation, according to the Bible, did not begin in the light. 
in verse 2 in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, all creation began. The earth was void. There was nothing. And there was darkness that covered the deep. And here's the crazy part. The Spirit of God moved itself across the waters in this darkness. Verse 3 now becomes the power, which is God said, let there be light. And there was light. Two things to note here. One was that light itself came after the darkness, that in the pit of darkness came light through a declaration. But second was the integrity of that statement. Said light and there was light. So let's back this up. People think they've got to get to a place where they are in the peak of power before they can begin to speak about what is inside of them. They think they've got to talk about what comes after. That if I can just get the photo right on Instagram, if I can just get the YouTube right, if I can just get the script right, then I will be able to become an influencer with a platform. I will be asked to speak on stages. I will be asked to speak here and to do this and to build a business that matters, it makes me feel inspired, yet you're full of shit for one simple reason. Nobody wants to hear about your peak unless they've felt you in the pit. In 2009, in the darkest place I had ever been, I'd lost all of my insurance and banking firms from 2000 to 2008. No money, no idea, no credibility, no networks. My wife and I had our second daughter and I cheated on my wife while she was pregnant with my second child. What kind of fucking man does this? I found myself deep wrapped up in addiction, licking my wounds like a victim pointing my fingers at my wife, pointing my finger at the world, pointing my finger at the banking world, pointing my finger at everybody I possibly could, feeling horribly unqualified, horribly overwhelmed, horribly unworthy, shielding and hiding myself no different than Adam as we continue along in creation in the book of Genesis where he begins, he eats of the fruit and he becomes ashamed. And he hides himself from God. He hides because of this shame. This was me hiding myself. Terrified and embarrassed. And in this place, this voice began to speak to me all alone in this darkness. A voice that speaks to you too. Just like the book of Genesis, creation beginning in darkness, not in your peak, not in your beautiful results, not in the fruit that everybody thinks is amazing. God calls you in the pit long before because there's a journey you're being asked to take. I didn't understand it. And so I found myself running on a treadmill early in the morning by myself in a basement with a wife who had pushed me away, rightfully so having to sell shit out of our basement to try to pay for groceries to get into the fridge. My wife was disgusted by me. I was disgusted by me. Who had I become? How dare I put my family in this fucking place? And in that place came a simple voice that night, early morning, running on the treadmill. Two things. The first question was, have you had enough. I know there are some of you on here. I get you. I'm around thousands of amazing people every single week, mostly men, but women too. And there's a moment where you have to make a decision. You have to decide this is enough. Fuck this. I will no longer tolerate the way that I am living and operating. It's a moment. It's a decision. Tony Robbins says transformation is not a series of decisions. It's a moment when you shift this thing as, as spoken of in Romans 12, when God says there's a renewing of mind, there's a transformation that occurs, not a change. A transformation where you go from one place of thinking to another and God opens up your mind and there's a flow that comes in in this place where there is nothing. There's darkness. Maybe you're single and you're broken and you're, you're married and you're broken. Maybe you're struggling financially. 
maybe a pandemic over the last year has completely sucked all sense of faith out of you and you find yourself scrolling on Instagram filled with more fear and panic and worry. And yet in this, I'm going to ask you the same question that God asked me. He said, have you had enough? The second question was a question that altered my reality forever. And the same voice said, if I lead you to these stages, will you say what I need you to say? I had nothing. I had no credibility at the time. I had no networks. I had no lists. I had nothing. There is a voice that is asking you the same thing this week. And it's easy to think that inside of the pit of our lives, that this place that we find ourselves in, as life itself seems to dip into this darkness before it rises, it's easy for us to see ourselves here and say, well, what, what do I have to share from this place? And I would have you consider that you have the power to share the deepest and most vulnerable and real truth that cuts through the noise and the plastic TikTok bullshit and all the fucking dancing gank, 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 fucking stupid shit. It cuts through the chaos of CNN and all the bullshit media because people are searching online just like you being here at Pete's event. Searching for truth. It was prophesied that we would live in a time, that we would live in a time, and that time is now, where men and women would search with thirst, with desire, so deeply for truth, more so than food and water, there would be a starvation of the soul that was coming with a lack of truth, and it's so confusing. What is true anymore? Who's lying to me and who's not? Who's speaking what is? Is this a hype? Is this real? Who the fuck is this guy talking to me? Who is this gal talking to me? Should I trust that news media outlet? Should I trust that person? People don't trust each other in dating relationships. They don't trust each other in business. They don't trust. Trust has gone to zero. Why? Because you lie. See, and the challenge of speaking truth today is that truth is received as a declaration of war. When you have the courage to speak the ugly and yet beautiful truth of darkness inside of you, people listen. They're not surprised. Over and over at Wake Up Warrior over the past decade, 55,000 men that I've led all say the common same thing. It's like you were, you were in my head. It's like you knew me. How did you know me? I've told no one any of these things. And I said, it's simple. I shared with you my path from the pit to the peak. And I met you in my messaging in the pit. I followed the order of God who in verse two, made it very clear that prior to all creation, there was a void of nothing but potential. And in that place, in verse 3, God spoke and said that let there be light, and there was light. And you follow creation, biblically speaking, and everything about the life continues. The first thing that God does is separates the light from the night. This is the first piece. Darkness speaks light. There was light. And then day one of creation separates darkness from the light. Truth from the lies. You could change the wording of this and say, and God said, let there be truth. And there was truth. You want to speak to people, you want people to listen to you? Stop fucking lying. Stop hyping shit. Stop trying to make it right. Stop following all the scripts. Connect to the kingdom and speak. Turn your phone on and speak. What do I say, Garrett? What do I say? Start with where you're at and tell the truth. But nobody wants to hear my darkness. 
Nobody wants to hear your hypey bullshit. That's the truth. Nobody wants to hear your victim talk from your pit either because you're not a victim in your pit. People say, Garrett, how do I build a platform and a movement that matters? You become the message. How do you become the message, Garrett? You stand in the one place that nobody around you is willing to stand. I didn't build Wake Up Warrior and DKW Styling Salons across this country because I was smarter than everyone. I did the one thing that no one would do. Years before it was cool to be authentic. Years before people were trying to have a voice and share it on the internet. I got very clear that the man or woman in any room who has nothing to hide is the single most powerful man or woman in that room. I don't give a shit if people make more money than me. Money does not necessarily make you the most powerful. I don't care if you're married to the most beautiful man or woman. I don't care what your world looks like in any room that I am in. You will never be more honest than me. You are, I am scandalous. You cannot make me a scandal. There's nothing you can fucking find out about me I've not already put on the internet. It's just like the movie Eight Mile when Eminem at the very end, in the final rap battle, if you haven't seen this, he's done all this stupid shit and bad shit's happened to him and Marshall Matters gets up during the movie rendition and he goes down a list for three minutes and he tells everybody in the audience all the shit that happened. The guy that fucked his girlfriend, but his mom lives in a trailer. He lives in a trailer with his mom that his best friend shot himself in the leg. He just runs down the list. Here's all the stupid shit you're gonna try to say about me. Well, guess what? Once he got done, then he looked at him and he said, why don't you tell these people something they don't already know? I wanted that kind of freedom. I didn't want to be a brand because I've met plenty of celebrities and plenty of athletes that are one way on stage and then they're assholes and bitches off stage. They talk shit about people behind stage. This is why I run with Pete because Pete and the people here are not like this. Committed. Committed to what? The path. And the path is this journey between the pit to the peak, but this requires you to experience a couple of things. The first one is it requires you to be real. It requires you to be real. Be real about what? Be real about the facts, about where you are right now. Don't try to pretend like you're somewhere else. And here's the fun part. Some of you are like, well, I'm not in the pit right now. You know what's crazy? My pit is higher than most people on the planet's peaks. And I also know that there's a shitload of people where my peaks are lower than their pits. The process of expansion in life and the process of becoming, this is a cycle because each peak is followed by another dip into another pit and that pit raises you to a new peak. And each time that you raise above this, your prosperity, your profitability, who you are, continues to push to another level. This dip into darkness is the restart of creation. It's like reading through the first couple of chapters of Genesis, then hitting rewind and going zip, back to verse two, starting in the darkness again. And once you recognize this, you stop being afraid of it. You also stop being afraid of everybody else's pit. You understand why people operate the way they operate and you recognize that if I can be honest, if I can be real about the facts in my pit, if I can share these things, not from a place of being a victim, but I share them from a place of here's where I'm at and here's what I'm trying to figure out. Along with that, that I can get raw. That I can be honest about my feelings. This is hard for men. I've been training men for 10 years. Men, it's really hard. It's hard. Women tend to be more. I'm not, that's very gender biased for sure. And women tend to be more open. My experience, all my thousands of airsides, they're more open to talk about feelings. Guys are like, fuck, I don't have feelings. What? And the problem is our side is top men. You're a total pussy if you do have feelings. How dare you talk about feelings? What? And if you, then you got the opposite side, this game is of, of, of don't say anything about it or you're over the top victim about your feelings, which has become cancel culture. Oh my God, my feelings are hurt. And everybody around me has to what? Wrap themselves in bubble tape to make me feel happy. Fuck them. You get raw and you deal with your feelings and you share how you really feel. Some of the most powerful videos you've ever seen online came from a cell phone, from people just being honest, sharing the facts and talking about their feelings. And what was the third piece? 
stay relevant so when I'm sharing this is about sharing with focus so you get a lot of people that go online and they're starting to share and they, and they, they want to share a message but they're not they're not their message we're saying share from a place of power your message but start in the pit don't make shit up just start with what is what's true if you're at the peak then go there but for most of us it comes back to starting in the pit until i got honest with the darkness in me and honest about how much i had fucked up life when i was honest about this it gave me a chance to learn i could learn about it i could learn about myself i could learn about the business i could learn about money i could learn about things it's when you mess up that you end up in darkness and then all god's asking you to do is say and speak light that's all will you just speak the facts will you just tell the truth please because once you do this we're going to divide the truth from your lies and inside of that place creation can begin but you will not create a movement you will not create a platform if you keep trying to only come from the light because the creation of the world began in darkness there's people that don't like to hear this and i'm like i took it straight out of your bible what are you talking about verse 2 genesis chapter 1 darkness verse 3 light and then what did god do he separated darkness from the light and then creation began there was a foundation for creation you must become your message but your message is found in your personal witness to the pit to the peak it's your willingness to be real and to talk about it to get raw and to stay relevant and as you share you share from a place and i'm going to give you a simple model to wrap up people are like well gary where can i start with this and i was really simple start getting on your phone every single day go live share yeah but only one pe person listens to me that's how it starts for everybody and until you got something to say it won't really matter and you're like well well somebody might see it i was like no it doesn't matter it doesn't matter who sees it because people are going to go back and look at the shit you post. When people look at shit I started posting and I started doing videos back in 2009, they're like, oh my God, who's this idiot? Half the videos, the face is cut off. It's easy now with a cell phone. Here's a model I follow. What? Why? Lesson. Apply. This is how I did thousands of my podcasts for five minutes. Thousands of videos I have done over the last decade, all speaking from this pit to peak, not trying to pretend like I got it all figured out, talking about my pain, talking about my problems, talking about why that matters. So I share what? I pick an event. I pick something that occurred in my life, and then I share why that mattered to me. Here was a moment on a treadmill where God was asking me, do you have enough? Have you had enough? If I lead you to these stages, will you say what I need you to say? What happened? I was running on the treadmill and this voice started talking to me inside. Why did that matter? Because this was the beginning stage of creation for me. Here's the lesson. God meets you in the night and asks you to fight. How do I apply that? Business, marriage. That's the cool thing about this model. You can share it to anything. A lesson applies to anything. Your ability to master this simple framework for sharing. What, why, lesson apply. Here's what happened. Here's why it's, it means something to me. Here's the lesson that I learned from that experience. And here's how you and I can apply that to our lives. People want to be guided forward from their pits to the peak. And where you currently stand in a pit today, well, guess what? Your peaks are still higher than people's pits that are behind you. I'm going to leave one last idea with you. It's this. At the end of all of this, the end of this life, and at the end of this journey, you're going to have to be face to face with you. And come to love all aspects of who you are. I love my guy that's in the dark. I love my guy that's in the light. But I learned to love him and I learned to own and build the businesses and the empires that I have now, starting with one simple courage, and that was the courage to speak the truth. Speak the truth. In order to lead a movement, you must become the message of that movement. And in order to become the message of that movement, you must be willing to speak about the unspeakable. Your creation begins in night, and it's just waiting for you.
to speak light. Thank you for having me today. That's my time. Wow. <laughs> Garrett, Garrett J. White, everybody. Hey, I'm, I'm back here look, looking at the comments on YouTube. And listen, you might say, gosh, Pete, that, this guy, this guy, man, he dropped a couple of F-bombs. This guy, this guy, this guy spoke truth. And here's the thing. I've, I love Garrett. Like, Garrett is a dear friend. If Garrett called me today and said, hey, I need you in Cali, I'd figure out how to get to Cali tonight and, and navigate to set up a studio there if he needed me because he speaks the truth. And I want to keep him up on the screen. Yeah, I think he's still up on the screen. He speaks the truth. Your message starts with you. Like, we've been talking about all the strategies and tactics, but none of it matters if, 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 if you aren't going to take a stand for the truth of your own message. And if you keep lying to yourself, everybody knows you're lying to them. They know you're lying to them. Garrett, I, uh, man, I'm blown away. And I love the framework you gave to Garrett. Like, can we get Garrett up, guys? I love the framework that Garrett gave uh, as well. It was so simple. Did y'all write that framework down? Did y'all uh, write that framework down? I'm going to have you teach a lesson today. I'm just going to tell you that is your homework assignment in the Facebook group. I want you to teach a lesson. I don't even have to wait till the end. I want you to teach a lesson from your life with the framework that he just gave you. Just what he gave you. That is it. Garrett, dude, that is, it was such a way to kick, like the comments are like, I'm crying, I'm laughing, I'm shouting. Yeah, he brings out every emotion in you to hopefully get to that point where you find the moment. Garrett, I think some people found the moment today. Like, I really think they found the moment today. Not everybody, because some people are busy or they're, 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 they're on social media kind of half paying attention or they're upset because, oh my gosh, I heard the F-bomb drop, like whatever. But I believe some people found that moment today, bro. Like that moment that they're going to look back on October 16th and I see lots of heads, 2021, saying that was the moment where it all shifted for me, bro. So I don't know. Any final thoughts from you, dude? I love having you kick it off today. Yeah. So here, here's what I would tell you going throughout the whole day. The rest of today and the rest of this conference and following Pete as long as you continue to be part of this. Like Pete, I trust Pete Vargas more than I trust anyone else in the speaking world. More than anyone that's coming to speak on his stages, I trust Pete. Pete is the guy that manages the guys. And it's his heart that has you come here to this place. Here's my encouragement. When you listen the rest of today to these amazing speakers. By the way, we're all amazing, powerful at what we do, but Pete is the guy that manages all the guys. Like I want you to understand who you're dealing with. He's the guy who has the platform that, that manages all the platforms. So he's sharing from his heart with this, but as you're listening today, take notes under that framework. Here's what I heard. Here's why that matters to me or why it feels like God or the voice of me is, is having me pay attention to that. Here's the lesson that I'm learning. Make it simple like you were trying to put it on a meme on Instagram and then apply it to whatever area of life you need work on right now. The lessons that God's trying to teach you in your life every day and through every speaker today, that lesson is applicable to all areas of life. Most of us isolate it down or we listen to feel motivated instead of listen for revelation and action. So as you listen the rest of the day, use the framework. What why lesson apply? And inside of that, be real, get raw, and stay relevant. Like, be real with yourself today about it. Be real about where you're at with you. And this is why I love Pete. It is what it is. I mean, like, he, the most honest guy, absolutely filled with integrity, and pushes for you to win. Like, when he builds these stages, you understand he doesn't have to do this. <laughs> I have studios. I know how hard it is to put together what he's put together. So thank you for being here on a Saturday from wherever you are all over the world. And I appreciate you being here. Um, I honor you. I know that my language pisses people off and you're welcome. For the ones who are offended by it, guess what? That'll be a good trigger for you. Because oftentimes we need to hear from someone that allows us to get irritated so that the irritation allows God to work himself into us. Mm -hmm. And you may find that the next speaker says some things that are exactly what you needed to hear, but you wouldn't have heard it if I not piss you off. So, come on. <laughs>
<laughs> I love that. Garrett, thank you, dude. Thank you for being here on a Saturday. I know what's going on in your home. Love you, bro. I love you, man. Thank you, you, guys. Give it up for Garrett. That was, un like, wait, what a way to start it off. Hey, I love what he said. I'm going to give you your homework assignment early. What speaker, like, what was something a speaker said today? Why did that matter to you? What was the lesson that you're taking from it? And how are you applying that immediately? That's going to be at least, that's, that's a homework assignment. That's a homework assignment. I love it. Hey, for the record, platformtourcares.com, Garrett's got a program that he's actually sold for $5,000 in the past. I had to put a value on it, put a value on it lower just so you guys, but he really has sold that package in the gold package for $5,000. And it's in the gold package for all of our gold members. That is unbelievable, that in alone. So make sure you go to platformtourcares.com, platformtourcares.com. Uh, man, I want to bring these guys up really quickly here because they've got a huge thing. But let me introduce them. I, I got the chance to meet uh, John Lacari and Jack Fallon through one of our speakers today, Stormy Wellington. And this is the one I need to look at heads on or this one head on. Like, okay, I just want to be able to be heads on a little bit. So I got to meet these two gentlemen, and I had heard so much about them. And when I met them, they are the definition of what I want in people who build platforms. Two guys from the Midwest, good old boys, hockey boys. Like, they're just good old boys, grew up hardworking, but they wanted to create something bigger and a bigger movement in this world that was bigger than themselves. If you're here today because you wanna build a platform that's all about you, like this isn't the place that you probably need to be. There's a lot of social media influencers that are all consumed about themselves out there. This is about building a platform that's bigger than you. And guess what? You'll get paid. And so I met these two guys, and I'm actually speaking at their event today. I was up on their stage today. These are guys that have built a nine-figure platform. And bigger than that are changing people's health across the world. And there's a couple of things that stand out to me about what they've done that I love that they're gonna come talk about what has allowed them to build something from the ground up. They weren't passed it along, they weren't inherited it, they built it from the ground up, and it's unbelievable. I want you guys to welcome to the platform tour, Jack uh, Fallon and John LeCari. Are they here, are they here? I think they're here, yeah, give it up. Yes. All right, Pete, they, thank well, you. Jack yeah. will be here in a second. Okay, Jack. All right, will, all right we, we got, just got done with our first session, so he's running over here as we speak. No, I love it. Well, well thank you, bro. Thanks for having me on the, on, on the tour, and uh, I'm just honored to be here, man. I, I love what this stands for and, and, and how you're helping with sex trafficking, and it's like that really kind of like connected with me right away. And thank you for explaining to me exactly what sex, sex trafficking means because yeah. I think most of us don't know. Yeah, they don't know. Bro, I'm blown away. How many – so over here about – I'm here because we're, we're – we're, we're, we get to do, they're a client of ours, and I, yeah. I love what they stand for. Total Life Changes is making a big difference in this world. How many people right now are listening on your platform from how many different nations, I mean? Oh, shoot, man. Um, well, we, we actually touch 170 different countries through Total Life Changes where we either direct ship or ha we have actually 17 offices around the world. 170 um, countries. How many do you yeah. think are here today? We probably, uh, in person and virtually, we probably have about 100 company, uh, countries, excuse me, represented at this moment. Guys, it's amazing. 100 yeah. countries. Yeah. And and y'all started building this platform in what year? Tell us a little bit about uh, that story. Well, this is this is one heck of a story. So 1994, Jack found uh, uh, my my friend, my mentor. Uh, my best friend and my business partner. We met in an uh, assembly line at Ford Motor Company, 1994. As fate would have it, as God would wanted it, we ended up next to each other. We, we, you know, we established a friendship, and he started talking to me about this whole network marketing thing. And I just I kept on telling him, like, like you would probably tell someone, Pete, right? You come from that world. It's like 
man, that's a scam. That's, that's, that's a cult, man. Like, I want nothing to do with that. So, you know, we bickered back and forth uh, for about five or six years about that. And then, uh, but, but, but obviously, we became close, right? We became really good friends. We hit it off right away. And then in 1999, for the first time ever, he, he stopped me in my tracks. And I always tell people this because I think this is really, really important. Because remember, I'm a non-believer at this moment. Right? And Anybody have non-believers out there? Anybody have non-believers? Like, I have non-believers, oh. by the way. All of us have non-believers. Has somebody said lots of laughs? Yeah. Th this is huge, like what I'm about to say, and I, I, because it's so important. It's such a huge part of my story. So in 1999, after five years of hearing about, hey, this business opportunity, we can, you know, it helps people become better versions of themselves, and you got to get exposed to this new world that you're not being exposed to. And I was like, what does that even mean? You know, like, that just sounds weird to me. So, but in 1999, Jack found, comes into that auto assembly plant on the assembly line, five in the morning, fired up, like passionate, man. That's why passion is so important So he's to still me. working full-time at We're this. still working for full-time at four. He's got this dream. He's doing his, you know, his network marketing business part-time. Tell me how great it is, even though he's failing at it. But he comes in one day with, with this moment of passion that just stops me for the first time in five years. And now, instead of hearing him, I'm actually listening. Mm. And that's why I think this is so powerful, really, mm -hmm. what I'm about to say. He comes in, and for the very first time in five years, I listened instead of just hearing him. Mm -hmm. And why? Because he was so damn passionate about an idea. He said, Johnny. He called me Johnny back then. He still calls me Johnny now. <laughs> you know, everyone knows me as John LeCarrie. He said, Johnny, you're not going to believe it. I've got this awesome idea. He goes, do you know, like, people are taking vitamins every day and, they're, and it's not absorbing in their body. And I want to come out with a liquid multivitamin so people get the whole entire nutrients that they're supposed to get. And did you know that the food supply has changed in 50 years and people aren't getting the vitamins, they're not getting the minerals, they're, like, they're being cheated and we can save the world. And I still didn't believe him. But, man, that passion stopped me in my tracks. So I tell people all the time, Pete, it's like, man, if you're passionate about something, I'll listen. Mm. You know, if you're passionate about golfing, maybe I don't want, you know, nothing to do with it, but I'll sit there and listen, man, like, like, really. And so that passion stopped me, and I finally listened, and then I kind of wanted him to succeed. Mm. So I'm like, you know what, I want your passion to become a reality. I want, right? So now that started to change me a little bit. And I'm like, bro, man, like, I don't know if that's going to work, <laughs> but uh, okay, you know, good luck to you, right? But at least I wasn't an adversary to it anymore. Wow. Right? And why? Because it was this product. Now this idea was like of a product that could help millions of people. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to fight with him anymore, but I'm not going to help him either, <laughs> right? Well, he had moved you out of adversary into neutral. Exactly, right? So that was the moment. So the passion got me into the neutral, right? Then what happens is he goes and starts it. Out of the trunk of his car on the factory floor, people are coming, buying the vitamin, telling you, hey, I'll pay you next week. But I knew they weren't paying him next week. <laughs> um, and he was selling Nutriburst all over the place. I knew he was unorganized. There was Nutriburst in his car on the floor. There was receipts everywhere. It was, it was total chaos. But he was passionate about it. And people loved the product. And they felt it. And they were so, so grateful for it, right? So a couple years later, um, we're in 2002 now. He's like, he comes, you know, in that moment of passion again. He's like, I got to take this thing in network marketing. I got to do peer-to-peer. -peer. I, I got to have people be advocates for this thing. And, because and, he was just doing it on his own. Yeah, and that was really the only way, you know, that you could really kind of expand, right? Like, if you don't have the money. To, like, distribution, to just, yep. Right, we needed this distribution, right? So I still wasn't part of it. So he starts it. I said, good luck to you. I can't do that. I've got young children. I, you know, I, I don't have any time. I was actually running a hustle, side hustle myself at the time, doing landscaping on top of the Ford Motor Company career. Um, so he goes ahead and starts. And about a year later, 2003, uh, here's the other moment that kind of changed everything for us. He comes into work kind of like his face was different. You know, when you, when you love someone and, and you spend some time with them, you know, like, when something's off, right? And, and you kind of, like, it, it pulls yeah. you to say, like, hey, is everything okay at home? What's wrong? So something was wrong, and I knew it. And what was wrong was, and he, he admitted it to me, he said, you know, I just can't keep up, the, up with all the phone calls. I can't keep up with the orders. Um, I just really need help. Do you think you could help me? Wow. And so that's it, man. Like, passion and help, man. Like, like, those two things, like, the passion that he displayed got me to become neutral. And then finally, when he stopped asking me to join and started asking me to help, mm -hmm. like, I loved this guy. Mm -hmm. And there was no risk to me, right? So I, I always, you know, tell people that too, right? Yeah. We all want to help other people. 
but we don't want it to be risky. Yeah. We don't want to lose our money. We don't want to lose our time. We don't want to lose our reputation. I was afraid of all that stuff. Mm. But when he asked me to help, he made it risk-free for me. Mm. He said, just help me ship so I can get to all the phone calls. Mm. You won't have to speak. You won't have to travel. <laughs> you don't have to be the face of the company. You don't have to learn the compensation plan. You don't have to talk to the distributors. Just let me do all that. I just really need this help. Can you please help me? Mm. And man, that just changed everything for me. I was like, and I want to be honest with you and, and to everyone that's watching. I said, fine, but don't let anybody know I'm doing this. I don't want my family knowing I'm involved because I thought it was all scam, right? Yeah. Like, why are we doing this? Like, this is crazy. And years later, I started to learn exactly what we were a part of. But man, th those two moments, man, like, turned me from neutral to no advocate. And listen, man, I'm just going to say this. It's been almost 20 years. I am that person that I said I would never be. Wow. I am the face. I am the traveler. I am the one doing the, uh, you know, all the trainings and all that stuff. And because it's the changed my life. Because the passion has now been passed off to you. 100%. Man. Listen, guys, I want you to, and now you fast forward 20 years. Yeah, almost 20. 20. I don't know, 19. like, I mean, a, a, a very big company. I don't know yeah. what you can actually, like, the, what's the size of, like, the well, company? Well, we're trending towards a billion dollars in sales per year. Yes. Um, we, Trending we have, yeah. towards a billion dollars of sales per year, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Uh, come on. And yeah. serving how many? I mean, cost, I mean, oh, we have right now we have 130,000 active distributors, which basically means like they're on a monthly basis. They're active. How many man. customers? Oh, my God. A million plus. Million plus yeah. customers. It's amazing. man. Now, it really is. Is the, is the jacket? Oh, there he is. He's hey, way! welcome. Oh, is he mic'd up? We got a mic for him? Okay. I was about to give him some love. Yeah. It, was a, it would have been a perfect time for him to run in. Well, he's right? almost here, but, you know, I think a good segue for him is, I'm going to tell you, like, the last little piece where my belief, we talked about belief right in the beginning, right? And yeah. you said, hey, is there any non-believers out there? I was a non-believer forever, man. I really, really was. Mm -hmm. But one of the last things he said to me that I remember not, that I remember not, appreciating that I didn't believe mm. was that about 20 years ago when he finally asked me for that help I finally reluctantly kind of started to help him I remember one of the things he said to me in the beginning is he said we're gonna change the world people all around the world are gonna buy our products and we're gonna have a relationship with every single one of them And I was like man this guy is off his rocker yeah. man. like I didn't believe that and I feel so much regret for not believing that so now the adrenaline I feed off of, yeah. the, and like I jump out of bed in the morning and, and I'm, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like depressed to go to bed at night. Like I wish there was more hours in the day is because I'm working off of that regret, man, that mm. regret adrenaline. Mm. Like I've got to make up for that because I see the people. I touch the people. We talk to them. We have a relationship with our customers, with our, yeah. with our life changers is what we call our distributors, right? Because we're, we're telling them, go out there and change some lives, man. Yeah. It's not just about physical health either. It's about yeah. mental health and spiritual health, mm -hmm. how it all ties in. And it's just, it, it, it's been one hell of a story. Hey, guys, listen. So we've talked about one P here. Yeah. And I'm about to tell you two more P's with the founder here in just a second. The first P, like this isn't, like you might not have a physical product. You might not have a network marketing company or a physical product company or whatever, but you've got a message that you think can make a difference in this world. And the first thing I need you to hear are people aren't going to believe you until you bring passion to it. Until you bring passion to it. Passion is what captured his attention. But there's two more P's that these guys do really, really well that I don't want to stop with. I believe these three P's are the P's that have allowed them to build what they have built, trending towards a billion dollars in sales on an annual basis. So would y'all welcome, he can only see one of our backstage Zoom room VIPs. Would y'all welcome to the stage, Mr. Jack Fowley. Give it up, let me see it backstagers. Yeah, yes, come on oh, over. Thank you, thank you. So we just got the Genesis story. So this guy <laughs> is, these guys are amazing. Like my family come, I, my, my wife and our whole family is in Michigan. We'll be up there at Thanksgiving. We're up there a couple of times a year. These are some of the hardest working people in the world. Like they work their tails off. And so you got to hear about the passion of the message that this guy had for people's health, for people's health. Right now we're getting to help them even take that to a whole different level with this idea of my health matters. And it, 
It's about the message just con be continuing to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. But there's two other Ps, Jack. He talked about the passion you had to capture him. It's the passion I felt when I met you. It's the passion that everybody in that room in 100 different nations feels today. But there's two other things you guys do well. And it's your products. And I feel like you care about the people. Like yeah. every person, whether it's your team, the customer, whatever. But I feel like in order to build a powerful platform, whatever they're trying to do, coaching, services, physical products, I feel like you have to obsess over the products and the people. Will you talk about those two and why they're so important to you? Oh, for sure. <laughs> those are my favorite subjects. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, the, the products, um, a lot of people don't understand products. You know, including ourselves, where we had to continue to educate ourselves and, and learn how products, it, you know, they evolve just like technology. They really, truly do, and people don't realize that. So what we kept doing is going back to the manufacturers saying, okay, this is a great product, but you can make it better, mm. right? Because we're feeding people all over the world right now, so you could take a small product and make it better. Technology enables that. So it's just continuously pushing the envelope. You might have a great product, and, you know, I think we all grew up in the same era where it was like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Well, products are different. You can continue to fix them right, and make them better. So that's one of our passions. That's Johnny. I mean, we, we get products sent to us on a weekly basis from manufacturers saying, try this, try that, try this. You know, because obviously if they hit a home run, they have instant sales. So we, you know, we scrutinize our products and continue to, you know, add or make better. So it, it's, it's one of our passions. And then the people, the people. So let's, let me ask you a question sure. for them on this. So in, in them creating their products, whether it's physical products, yeah. digital products, service products, whatever type of products they're trying to create, how, how important, like, what would you say to them around, like, not what, like, the power of creating great products versus just average products, what that will do for them in the long run? Well, first and foremost, you, you, sometimes you have to get started. So, you know. Yes, you do. Good, good point. I so love that. get started first and then work your way into um, get a product that somebody's going to appreciate, whatever that product is, and then always have in your back of mind, I'm going to make it better. See, <clears throat> what happens sometimes, I think people like, oh, I'm going to make the ultimate. Well, the ultimate might take you so long that you could have got started. You know, it's like the old Henry Ford story. It's like all, everyone that comes up with something, just get it out there. Let that thing have some wheels and get some traction. And then know in the back of your mind, I'm going to make this better. I'm going to make it better. I'm going to depend on technology to make this product better. I love that. And what about the people? Like, I feel like when you care about the people, your customers, whether that be your distributors, your customers, whether that be their customers, like, Tomorrow we're talking in depth about this with Tim Tebow and Bethany Hamilton and another gentleman. But when you care about the people, it feels like everything else takes care of itself. Yeah, yeah it really does. I mean, you can always start off in, in, in your mind saying, okay, well, um, I'm going to monetize. But you, you don't, and, and it's very difficult to do that. And so you have to start looking at other companies that where the 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 people come first or it's customer service or it's, uh, you know, like Tesla. Tesla came out with a, a car, um, obviously, because they, they cared about the environment. But if you go inside the car, it's all people driven. Like they have a, um, you know, when you leave your dog in the car, like it, it will instantly continue to give it air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's so many things in that car. So when they when they developed that, they said, we're going to put the people first. Like everything you think of when you got in a car, Tesla's like, okay, let's make, humanize this. Wow. Let's humanize this car. So any product that you're looking to create, make sure you humanize it. Um, and then that will pull you in the direction of putting the person and the people first. And you're right. It does take care of everything else. Wow, guys. I, I just had a, I had a massive aha of the days. I have not spent enough time sitting in the seat of the person. Like literally sitting there, yeah. sitting there for a minute. I just had this breakthrough because what I love about these guys is they're in the direct selling and network marketing space, but they're trying to create a category of their own. They think like Tesla and Apple and those people. They're like, how do we get ourselves into the ultimate health and wellness side of things? But I don't think we spend enough time sitting in the seat of the person 
because we even forgot who that person was, which was us. Right. Sometimes we forget yeah. that. And when we can think of every angle, I think about Tesla, my dogs back there. What about the kids? What about whenever, like, I hit my head on this? Or what if I forget my key? Like, they probably thought about every mistake or error or thing that brings us anxiety in that car as a human. Right. And they solve to it. Right. right. And if we can actually sit in the seat of the customer, and don't forget, you were that person, or you are that person, but I don't spend enough time doing that. And if, I will, if we will spend more time doing that, we'll know everything that the yeah. person wants. You got something on that, yeah. don't you? I, I, I mean, honestly, I mean, I just wanted to add, like, when people feel like you care, they're willing to share your product, your service, your movement, right? So, like, you know, the, the thing with Tesla, right? Like, they care about pets, too, right? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like now, like, someone's going to take that message to their neighbors, to their coworkers, the people they go to church with, and say, "Man, you got to look into Tesla." The like, pet they lovers care, club. Is they care be like about Tesla. people. They care about animals. Like they care about pets, right? Like if they know that you care, they're going to share. Mm -hmm. You need people to share. Like we're we're in a, we're in a cool business model, right? Like people are who shares for us. It's yeah. not billboards. It's not TV stations, right? It's not even social media to a certain extent, especially you know mass media wise. But like, if people know that you care, man, they're so willing to share, man. Like, they don't care if they're not making money off of it. They don't care about any of that stuff, man. It's like, I love what these people stand for. I love what they've got going on. And, I mean, the only other thing I wanted to add as you guys were talking is, like, great products are important or even a great service that provide a feeling. Right. Man, like, they got to feel it. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like, the microwave, let's just say, right? They invented the microwave, right? Like, like. Yeah, it, it heats up food fast, and you can cook in there and stuff, right? But, like, if some woman out there, a man, like, says to themselves, like, man, I can spend more time with my family now. Mm. Like, that feeling of, like, man, this thing did this for me. Yeah. Like, right? Like, it's that feeling, the product, the service, and, and that's what people remember. Right. And that's why they want to buy, join, be part of your nonprofit, all of that stuff, man. It's how you make them feel. They're going to remember that forever. Man. Hey, last question, because you guys are running a big event over there. You got a lot of people over there. So... And I'll, I'll start with John, and then I'll come to Jack to end this. So you had this feeling, this message. Like, ultimately, it was this message that you felt, and it would turn into products and manifest itself into a company, that you went to the GM floor on, in 1999, and you shared with John, and you were so passionate about this message. Every single person watching, and there's, you know, every day tens of thousands of people watching have this message in them. And some of them haven't started it. Some of them have kind of started it. And some of them have really done some things, but they're trying to take it to the next level. What would you say to that person who has that burning message, that passionate thing that they know can change the world, but they can't change it unless they actually get more people and build their platform? What would you say to those people, John? Man, I would say keep on sharing that passion man, as loudly as you can. And, and there's going to be the detractors, there's going to be the naysayers, your f family and friends are top of the, on that list, they're going to tell you that ain't going to happen, that ain't possible, you know. Grant Cardone said two days ago, they are usually, it doesn't matter what yeah. your message is or what your yeah. industry is, your family <laughs> and friends are the right. ones that will. Yeah. And that's a message within and of itself. That's our story too, right? And it's kind of like, I think with every business, this, is, this happens. And I don't know what it is about human behavior, but like when the strangers... Start getting excited about your products, your services, your business, your nonprofit, your organization. All of a sudden, the family notices, and they're like, hey, are you guys still doing that thing? <laughs> like, you know yeah. what I mean? Or, hey, right. I'm interested in the vitamin now or whatever, yeah. right? It's kind of yeah. like the stranger, you got to get their attention first, right? It, it's crazy, but it's, you see it over and over and over again. Um, and I think that's important for people to know. Like, don't get frustrated in the beginning mm. when your friends and your family and even your coworkers start telling you that ain't going to work or that's stupid. Or, like, if you're a passionate man, just keep on sharing that passion. You're going to run into guys like me and Jack who are like, you're going to get our attention with that passion. Yeah. And we're going to listen. Wow. They're, they're yeah. out there, man. There's men and women out there who are moved by passionate people. Mm. We believe passionate people are going to change the world. I love it. That's it, man. Like, Dude, you know, it. really, really, I think passionate people really can change the world, man. And, and, and I didn't believe that 20 years ago. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't believe that 20 years ago. Wow. But when I started to realize, like, man, having a relationship with our customers is really damn cool. Wow. It I, really, really is, man. I love that. How about you? All those people, they all have messages out there, bro, and they have something they feel can change this world. What would you say to them? Well, I mean, don't stop, but if you do run into roadblocks, 
you invite them in, invite failure, invite failure every day because that's the only way you're going to learn and grow. Mm -hmm. So you just keep that in the back of your mind. You want to fail. And if there's a roadblock that you think you can't overcome, continue to write down, like physically write down what you're going, to, how you're going to overcome it or what you need to do to overcome that. And then always um, take a step back and humanize your product or your service that you're looking to market. Mm. Um, that usually will click something else in the side of your brain that will say, oh, okay, this makes sense. Mm. But now you're, you're in a conversation with yourself on a daily basis. You, you've invited failure in, you're writing what you want to accomplish down, and then the, the third, you're humanizing it so you can't go wrong because we're all connected. And if you humanize something that's going to make the planet or someone's life a little bit better, there's a good chance the universe is going to conspire on your side and you're going to hit a home run. I love that. Hey, Amen. guys, will y'all give it up for Jack <laughs> and John, my buddies here, two Thank amazing you. friends. Thank you. Give it up for them. I know they have their event. I'm going back over there after this too. But, guys, thank y'all for being Thank on the you. platform pleasure, tour man. and Thank let us go on behind the scenes of y'all's platforms. Please. Thank oh, y'all. Thank you. Thank y'all. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I love thank it. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thanks to all of you guys for being a part of it. Thank hey, you. guys, these two are amazing guys, amazing guys, amazing humans. Listen to me. I need you to hear this. When you build your platform, you will have naysayers. And the hardest part of building your platform is out of the gates. Out of the gates, out of the gates. But if you have enough passion, you care about the people, and I'm gonna take the people one step further. You actually enlist people to help you. When, you hit a, when I hit a roadblock, I don't try to figure it out on my own. I go to somebody who's figured it out already. And if you create great products, you can create what these guys have created. They're making a massive impact in the world, a massive impact on people's health. And so one of the things I want to say before I talk about, bring up our next speaker, gosh, we've got a massive surprise that's going to close out today. Today's going to go a little bit longer, but I'm telling you, you're not going to want to, who's closing this out today, it's going to be unbelievable. Got a little surprise on the closeout. This is what I want you guys to know. For all of you that are new today, we've only tackled, listen, can we bring these slides up? We've only gotten to clarity. Uh, can you bring this up on the back screen? Clarity right here with Garrett White. So we've gotten to clarity with Garrett White right here. You got to get clear on your message. And with Jack and John, I'll move these out of the way. We've got, we got clear on products on products. Sorry, go back. Okay, there we go. On products. But I would dare and, and I would dare to say that they even talked a little bit about a little bit more than products. People, which is scaling. How do you scale? You scale with relationships. You scale with people. So we've already tackled three of the pillars. And this is what I want to say to you before I bring up this next person. We, as Garrett said, are the ones behind the scenes of helping more people build their platforms than anybody else in the world. We are the ones. And what I have given to you this week, not just for the sake of charity, but what I have given to you this week is I've given you this opportunity. Our speakers have allowed us to put together this package of $25,000 of resources, which is the PhD. It is the PhD of building a platform. Stop trying to do this on your own and do it with us. Do it with us. Let, let these speakers help you build your platform. If you go to platformtourcares.com, there is a bronze level, there is a silver level, and there is a gold level. All three of those, and I want to keep the view of the whole backdrop, guys. There is a bronze, there is a silver, there is a gold. 
And what these allow you to do, what these allow you to do, are y'all hearing me? I need the backdrop of it all. This is really important because I don't think people understand the power of 35 different resources. 35 different resources that you can lean on people and to stop getting stuck. And yes, Garrett White added, we have it valued at 2,000. It's valued at four or 5,000 because that's what it's sold for. That's part of the gold. And I forgot to tell you yesterday, Chandler Bolt made mention that every single person who takes advantage, we're gonna physically send you a book of his book called Published which is dedicated to helping you get your first book written. So I want to encourage you, all of the profits of this go back to charity, but you ain't doing it for the charity. That's the bonus. That's the cherry on top. This is for you. This is for you. This is to allow you to be able to build your platform. And so what I want to show you really quickly is there's a bronze, there's a silver, and there's a gold. And these speakers will continue. You can, you can see Garrett's got added here today. And the speakers will continue to add to these. Tomorrow night, all three of them, whole screen, all three of them go up $100. All three of these go up $100 tomorrow because the value since we first kicked this off, the value of what's in those packages has literally doubled. It's doubled because our speakers want to continue to contribute to helping you build your platform. And so here's, here's what I want to say before I bring up the next speaker. Tomorrow, the prices of all these go up. Wednesday, these packages go away because these are actually the paid products of these speakers. They're the paid products of these speakers, so they go away on Wednesday. And then on Friday, everybody in the silver, everybody in the gold, everybody in the bronze, we'll have an onboarding and a welcome call next Friday to help you walk through what's about to happen to help you build your platform. So we're gonna have a welcome call so you can take all of the stuff and make sure that we narrow it down to three simple steps for you on Friday. But important dates, tomorrow night this does go up. Tomorrow night these prices do go up. And Wednesday this does go away. And I can tell you, you can count on the packages continuing to grow and get better. I wanna bring our next guest up. I think this is important. We've got, we've got a few phenomenal guests. Who's, who's haven't already had like, wow, this day has been worth it already? Like already worth it today. Remember, we're trying to raise a million dollars for charity. A million dollars for charity is what we're trying to raise. But more importantly, we're trying to make sure that we build your platform so you can raise hundreds of millions of dollars for your platform so you can make a difference in this world. That's the beauty of what we put together this week. And so I'm excited to bring Jesse Ecker to the table, this guy has started his own, building his own platform, keep this up. For many years, for many years, Jesse has um, been serving somebody else. Anybody else out there, backstagers, you've been serving somebody else, mission, message, vision? That's a beautiful thing. Jesse served his dad for several decades and continues to serve his dad. Some of you might know his dad, his dad is T. Harv Ecker, wrote the book, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. But Jesse this year started in the last year set off to begin to build his own platform. And literally within starting off, he was able to generate six-figure days, create raving fans, and build a massive platform running online events. And so to take us into pillar number four and pillar number five, the revenues bucket and the scale bucket, actually the stage bucket, that should say stage, revenue and stage, revenue and stage, is Mr. Jesse Ecker. Give it up for Jesse Ecker, everybody. Give it up for Jesse Ecker. Give it up. Woo! Come on, bro. We're, stream on, hey, we're streaming. Hey, we're streaming. 
streaming. We're streaming to Me. hundreds of thousands, millions of folks, bro, in about 25 groups. So bring the noise. Help them understand how to build their platform. I love it. Thank you so much for having me, Pete. And I'm so excited to be talking to you all today. I am going to be talking about owning your own stage and how you're really going to use this mechanism to create raving fans, loyal customers, repeat customers, and the most amount of referrals you can possibly have for your business. If that sounds good, give me a heck yeah into the chat, wherever you're tuning in from, so I know that you're with me. Let me see it. Let me see it. <laughs> Okay, great. Lots of things flying through. I appreciate you guys for your participation. So my first aha moment came from something very unexpected. Um, and it wasn't until after this aha moment that I'm about to share with you that I realized how simple and easy business can be when you use one strategy. So here's how it happened. I was a teen and I was living in Vancouver, Canada, British Columbia. And I decided that I wanted to go on a snowboarding trip. And I wanted to go up to Whistler. Whistler was this amazing mountain right up the hill from me, about an hour away from me. And I decided to drive up. And what ended up happening, I was so excited for my trip. What ended up happening is I heard this boom, thud. And I was like, oh my God, did I just hit something? So I'm looking around, I didn't see anything. And then I kept driving and then all I hear thud, 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 thud. And I realized that it was my tire. And so I pulled over, I looked at my tire and it was completely split open. Now this was before there were things like iPhones, right? I couldn't look anything up. I am not a domesticated person, okay? I don't know how to do a spare tire. I've never done it in my life. I've never was taught how to do it. I thought my day was over. And so what ended up happening was I was sitting there contemplating, what do I do? I'm looking for a manual, looking for something, looking for some sort of help. And all of a sudden, this nice BMW came behind me. And this guy had this big guy, big smile came out. And I, <laughs> for the first time, I was like, should I be running right now? Like, should I get the heck out of here? Like, what's going on? But he came up to me and he was like, do you need some help? And I said, yeah, I would love to help. He said, you know, I own a used car dealership and I can do this in my sleep. Would you like some help? And I said, of course, I would love some help. Within 10 minutes, he fixed it, put on the spare. And you know what he said? He said, come by my shop. Here's a card and come by my shop and we'll get you some new tires, right? I had the best snowboarding day ever. This guy was like, saved my day. And so when I got home, I talked to my mom because I was a teen at the time. I was like, this guy helped me out. And what ended up happening was we went to a shop. The guy greeted us. This warm guy educated us. And he, and he started to show us some tires. But what ended up happening was really unexpected. What ended up happening is instead of buying tires that day, we left with a brand new car, a brand new car something totally unexpected. Now, not because he did anything different, it was because he used one simple strategy, a gesture, a simple gesture with no attachment for whether we decide to move on with him or not. And so when I was thinking about starting my own business and coming out from you know the last decade of running my dad's online platform, I thought to myself, how do I use simple, easy gestures that get people to get wins, to get momentum, and to give them a head start to getting an outcome that I know that they truly want. And so running your own stage and being the host of your own stage can be so simple if you take this strategy that I have used now for the last eight months to have six figure days and my own clients who are just getting started, people who have no platform at all, having five figure and also six figure days as well. And we all do it with what we call result and advance events, which is basically another word for hosting your own online event and promising and a result in advance without asking for money, without having an expectation of, Will this person buy or not? It's coming from a place of true, and I love how the guys right before us talked about this, true service. 
true service. So really quickly, before I get into the mechanism of how we do this so that we can actually make this tangible for you today, I wanna give you a quick introduction who I am. Pete kind of did this, but my name is Jesse Ecker. Most people have no idea who I am. And that's totally cool. For the last 11 years, I've been the guy behind the scenes running Harvecker Online, who is my dad, T. Harvecker, who wrote the book Secrets of the, uh, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And that was the number one New York Times bestseller. And so I was had the opportunity of taking his in-person seminars and repurposing them for online use. And it's been the most amazing opportunity for me to be able to do that. We've not only grown his platform to millions of people, but we also did multiple millions of dollars as well throughout the years, right? And so when I decided to actually start this, I used all of my biggest lessons that I learned over the last 10 years, what worked and what didn't. And one of the things that I noticed worked the best for us at least was owning our own platform, was owning our own stage. Why? Why does that work so well? Well, when it comes down to it, when you see someone on a stage, there's this instant authority, instant credibility, instant expertise that you perceive in your head. Oh, this person must know what they're talking about because that's what they're there. They're, they're there in front of people, right? And so when you own your own stage, one of the best things that can happen is people actually show up to learn from you, to learn from your process, to learn from what you actually do. I don't know about any other strategy other than that, that that actually makes you the perceived expert, right? When it comes down to it, you become the perceived expert because they show up for you. And you have this amazing opportunity to be speaking one time in an effective way to share your message, share your process, and share your offer of how you can take someone to the next level, right? So today I'm going to give you the three most important parts, the three most important parts to start to own your own stage, to start to really dial in how you can actually host your own stage. And we're going to do this online. See, I'm home right now. I just literally, like five minutes before, I was texting Ali, who was helping me out. And I was texting her, I said, hey, I'm putting my son for a nap right now. Now, how cool is that? That I can literally put my son for a nap, who's just over two, come here and do a talk, and then go outside and be with my family again. Like, doing this online gives you so much opportunity to really build a business, grow a business and scale your business to whatever level you want. And you see people doing this all the time. Pete's actually doing this right now, but he's got a lineup of superstar speakers, right? What we teach, you don't have to have a lineup of superstar speakers. You are the superstar or you have your team be the superstar. And so people actually show up for just you. But what comes from that is this amazing opportunity to build goodwill to build loyal fans and build raving customers. So if you're excited to get started and learn these three amazing things that are gonna help you build your own stages, let me say, see a heck yeah into the chat so that I know that you're with me. <laughs> that was like really high, with me. <laughs> heck yeah, tons of heck yeahs, awesome. So when it comes down to it, and I wanna make sure that it makes this super tangible for you so that you, you get the most out of this and you're really, I'm cranking your thinking here. But I want you to see this um, in, a, in a really brief view of how this actually works, okay? So the first thing when it really comes down to building your own platform or hosting your own stage is the way that we build platforms is hosting your own stage is really having what we call a service first mentality. Now, you've probably heard this from all of these speakers, right? Always coming from service first, always coming from service first. And, and the reason why they say that is because if you have a different motivation, like let's say you come from only a money motivation where your mo money is your single motivation to why you're building your platform. Do you think that that's going to last a long time? Do you think that you're going to burn out quickly because you have no real tangible motivation other than making money? See, money is a byproduct of the value that you bring to the marketplace. Let me say that one more time. Money is a byproduct, what happens, like a result of the value that you bring to the marketplace. And same with your service. 
if you are serving, the service creates the platform that you can have for this asset, for something that you can use for a long period of time. That's the byproduct is the platform. What creates the platform is you being in service to the marketplace. So you need to have a strong intention. What is your intention for building your platform? Now, again, you might be just starting or growing or scaling your business, and that's totally cool. But if you don't have the right service mentality, you're going to have a really tough time making this a forever thing or making this for a lifetime thing or however long this season of life is for you. So I have a question for you. Why are you doing this? Why are you here today? Why are you building your platform? And I'd love to see in the chat, what is it? Why are you doing this? Who is it going to help? Your customers, your immediate family, yourself, and who is it going to impact? And these are questions that I want you to think about because this is what's going to give you the strong reason to actually go out and do it. And also, we tend to do things much more for other people than for ourselves. So here's a little quick story and some transparency for you. I was very nervous coming on here, right? Like my butterflies are going, I'm sweating a little bit, which is all cool. And I run these events for hundreds of people, right? And so I was a little nervous. And so what I started to realize was I was thinking about myself. Is my talk going to be good? What are they going to think about me? You know, what are they going to, are they going to judge me? Or how am I stacking up to the other speakers? And it was all about me. Me, me, me. But then I remembered, Jesse, service first. Service first, my friend, service first. So then I started to think about you. And I started to think about if I could help one person, two people, or even five people think about or get started to put on their own stage or their own platform that they can actually host their own online events, it's worth it. And so right when I started to think about you, my butterflies went away my nerves went away, my fear subsided because I came from service first. The power of service first tends to be one of the most powerful things that you can tap into for yourself and for your business. Because I know when it comes to promoting yourself, that can be scary. There is a lot of stuff going up in, in there. And so we need to remember that we're not doing this for ourselves. We're doing this for our customers. We're doing this for everyone else. We're doing this for the impact that we're creating in this world. And having your own stage just helps to, helps to multiply that in a really effective way while you also get paid to do that, right? So first thing, let me see in the comments, service first. Let me see in the comments, service first or the chat that we're with me. Service first, my friends, service first. I love it. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for your participation. Uh, like Pete, you, you bring on the best of the best, man. You're awesome. Okay, so now that you have like this real reason why you're doing this, like why are we actually going out and building this platform? Because again, platform is the byproduct of what actually happens from you serving this, this, um, this community, serving your, your customers. Then we need to think about the, the platform, right? Now, here's the deal. Most people go out and they're like, oh, I just need this big platform. Once I have the big platform, I'm able to then do my thing. That's what everyone said. Here's what I'm saying. First, you don't need a big platform. What you actually need is what we call the right offer. The right offer. Let me see in the chat. The right offer. Please put this in because the reason why I'm asking you to participate is so that you ingrain this at a deep level. So we need the right offer. And the reason why we need the right offer is for this one word. It's one of the most important words that we can have in business and in marketing and in sales. It's called congruency. See, congruency is what separates the people who are just getting started, the people who make the biggest mistakes to those who are absolutely smashing it. Congruency is what really drives your revenue and really drives the right people to your platform, okay? So when we have the right congruency, everything works. What does that mean even? Well, when we have the right offer, what are we gonna offer people, whether that's a product program service, right? It could be someone else's product, but when we have the right offer, then we can think about 
Who do we want for the offer? That's the platform we want to build. But if we just go and build the platform and we have random people at our platform, then we come out with this random offer, we're not going to do as well. So we need to have the intention of what's my offer? What is my offer, right? And the offer is going to help us build our audience. So when we build our audience, then we can say, okay, now we have the right offer for that audience. See, I don't care if you have 20 people or a million people. If you don't have the right offer, the platform doesn't matter. You see influencers all the time with these massive platforms, but can't sell anything because they built the platform first and thought about the offer second, right? We need to build the offer first, or at least know the offer, and then go and build the platform because it's going to be congruent with each other. Now, here's the thing. And this is really hard for people to understand. The best offers in the world solve one problem for one person. One problem for one person. One problem for one person. Okay. Now, this is really hard for people to think about because it's like, Jesse, like you're telling me I have to cut off all these people that I can truly help because you're telling me I need the right offer. And my answer is yes, because specificity is one of the best ways for you to stand out in the market. The market is crowded. For you to get traction in the market, you need to be specific, specific, right? Specific to what you're doing, how you're doing it, who you're helping, because people want to be uh, heard and they want to be felt like you understand them. And if you're talking to everyone, you're talking to no one. So we need to find one person and one problem that we can support. And so the person I want you to think about is your dream client the person you want to work with, the person not giving you the headache, but that pays you on time, who's willing to pay you, who's, who's willing to pay the premium price to work with you. Describe that person, whether that's the demographics, their gender, their age, their location, are they married or not, their income, whatever that is. Or maybe it's their identity, they're an entrepreneur, they're a CEO, they're a managing director. Or maybe it's a personal identity, I'm a dad, I'm a husband right? I'm a, I'm a try to be a golfer, all right? If you understand these people, you can find these people. And then you, your offer will really speak to them because it's one person, one problem, right? So we think about what's our offer, and we think about one person, one problem, and we say, how do we make this offer irresistible to that person? This is how you're going to crush your results in advanced stage, okay? And I'm going to get to that in one second. So we think one person, one problem. And we say, okay, great. One person, one problem. What's the outcome they want? What's the transformation they want? What's the result they want? Do they want to be making $10,000 a month? Do they want to have more energy that lasts all day? Do they want to sleep through the night? What is that one outcome that they will be willing to pay for? What's that one result? Because when we're thinking about our result in advance event, we have to start with the end in mind because of the word congruency. When we host our own event, we want people to show up for the event who have this certain pain or frustration and go through this, this transformation for them wanting to get this outcome, right? So we need to know what's the outcome. What's the outcome? Put it in the chat. What's the outcome I'm going to deliver, whether that's with my own product, someone else's product, service, or program. What's the outcome? Let me see. What's the outcome? What's the outcome? What's the outcome I'm going to deliver? And once you know this, we can go into our final spot here, which I want to share with you is how we're going to design our events, how we're going to design our events. Okay. So when you have the outcome, it becomes really easy. So when we're thinking about this, we have this starting point, right? This is what we call the outcome journey. And then we also have this ending point, this is when they get the outcome, right? And so on the outcome journey, there are different steps people must take to get there. It's, it's like, do this, do that, do this, do that. And this is your product, your program, your service, whatever it is to get the outcome, the transformation of results, to get the outcome, the outcome the person wants, transformation over the result that they want. What's the result that they want, right? And so when we're thinking about our event, 
It's so easy. Here's what we want to do. We want to get them. We want to get them from point A to point B. And the reason why we want to get them from point A from to point B is because of Newton's law. A body in motion will tend to stay in motion while a body at rest will tend to stay at rest. And so we want to give them a head start, a result in advance. Whether they buy with us or not, we've gotten them into action. We've gotten them moving. We've gotten them some tangible result. Here, let me give you an, uh, um, let me give you a example. So let's say that uh, you help people um, land their dream career. Well, some of the things you need to do for their dream career is find the dream career. Then you need to negotiate the dream career. Then you need to actually land the dream career with your interviews or whatever. There's a lot of different steps. So your result in advance can simply teach people how to find the dream career. Now that you know how to find the dream career, my program that I'm gonna teach you, now that you know how to find the dream career, I'm gonna teach you how to land, negotiate, and get that dream career that's perfect for you, right? Because finding it is only one thing. There's so many other steps here for them to do. And so now you look like a superhero because you've literally just given them some results in advance. They feel like you are this amazing expert, which you are, right? It puts you in the position to be the expert, which you are. And on top of that, when it comes down to it, they want to keep going with you because that's the natural next step. Because here's the question. How many of you have ever got a result with someone? And said, um, so the, here's the question, okay? When you get a result with someone, do you want to do more with that person or less with that person? Do you want to do more with that person or less with them if you get a result? Everyone's saying more, of course. And when someone's actually wasted your time and you sat through like some webinar presentation for like an hour and it was a waste of time, do you want to do more with them or less with them? Less, of course. You want to do less with them. This is the power of this strategy is you want to do more with them because it's a simple gesture. It's a simple way for you to really get people in momentum. It's a way for people to come learn your process, learn your expertise, learn your credibility. And it's a way for you to use the one-to-many approach of sharing your message one time and affecting all the people who are there to hear you. So the goal for you here is to get someone to get a tangible result. It's to get someone to get a tangible outcome. It's to get someone a result in advance. And this is the best way that you can do this because I know product uh, business owners, they're amazing at fulfilling on their promise. They're not the marketers, they're not the salespeople. You're great at coaching, instructing, teaching, right? And fulfilling your promise. And this strategy, puts you in the driver's seat to do that because all you got to do is show up and be you. Thank you for listening to me. Let's go ahead and get you to get those results in advance uh, events up and going. Guys, hey, will y'all give it up for Jesse Ecker? Give it up for Jesse! Yeah, six figures in days. That's the, the possibility of that. Um, the possibility of that is real. It's real. And so I just want you to know, like, that is there, there, it to be able to create your own event and bringing the slides up, your own event. Jesse's talking about, and this is once again stages, but when you create your own stage, you can create the revenues that you want. You can create the revenues that you want. And so that's one type of your own stage. Really grateful for Jesse. I'm, I'm excited about this next guest. Our fine, we've got one more virtual guest, and then our final two guests are in the studio, in the house. I'm excited. And then we're going to be backstage with our VIPs. So I just want you guys to know we've got a couple more. So hang on. We're going a little longer today in Dallas live because I have real people in the studio but I'm excited because a lot of people, 
don't realize the power of sales funnels. Sales funnels, not only do they help you generate revenues, they help you scale time. Right now, I have sales funnels that are generating leads and sales for me right now. And I believe our next guest teaches this in the most simplistic yet powerful way. Her name is Julie Stone. She's a good friend. She's a, a, a partner in business with us. And I am so grateful to have her teaching this today. She's the only one teaching this in the seven days. And so we're in the revenues and the scale bucket. So would y'all welcome to Platform Tour, all of the dozen different places where this is being stre uh, streamed, backstage, front stage, Spanish speaking, VIPs everywhere. Would y'all welcome to the stage, Julie Stowen. Thank you so much, Pete. Um, we can hear you. Guys. All right, good. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, Pete. As always, you put on some of the best stage platform events I have ever seen. I am super grateful for you and your team and the people that you bring together. Just incredible. I've been watching the chat and watching all the speakers. You guys are just some of the greatest people to speak to of how engaged you are. My name is Julie uh, Stoyan. I'm an internet marketer. I am a sales funnel expert. I am the co-founder of Funnel Gorgeous. We teach knockout design and brilliant marketing. We kind of put those two things together. We run software. We help you build your all-in-one marketing platform. And most importantly, we help you do it in a way that feels good for your personality, for your mission, for your ethics, for your customers. So how many of you, when I say the word sales funnel, like what's the first thing that comes to mind? Because I know for some people, they know what sales funnels are. For other people, they're just like, ah, tech, right? That's the first thing they hear. I got money, cold calling, a lot of work, clickbait, <laughs> hard, but lots of, lots of upsells, tech, not sure. Okay, so I keep trying to figure out if I can get a good definition that will really make sense for people um, when we talk about sales funnels, because they are the key to selling online. Okay, they are the key to selling online, but we have to kind of expose what they're not and then imagine what they are. So at, in its most basic form, a sales funnel is a digital sales process. Up until the invention of the internet, we knew about real life sales process, right? You need a Christmas present for your nephew. You go downtown, you go to the store, you go into the toy store, you pick out a toy. There's maybe a salesperson there helping you pick out that toy. You get to the register, you pay for the toy, and you leave. That is a real life sales process, right? So sales funnels are just that digitally, okay? So it means that it is using specific web pages to help you make decisions about what to buy without a human involved. And so the reason why they're so popular is because right now, while Pete is in Dallas, while I'm sitting here with you from my home in Connecticut, sales funnels are doing the work. They are helping people make money, like buying decisions online through a digital sales process. All right. So are we all on the same page with that? Now, sales funnels can be built with all kinds of tools. Um, the biggest thing to know about sales funnels is that you really need uh, five assets to make a sales funnel. Okay. So these are them. I'm going to read them really fast. The first is you need a sales asset. So this is the actual page that you sell on, right? So it could be a video, it could be a webinar, it could be a piece of copy. It's a sales asset. So that's the first thing you need. The second thing you need is the cart asset. That's where the actual money gets exchanged. All right, so an order form. So just think about order forms on Shopify, order forms on WordPress, order forms on Kartra, on FG Funnels, where we run ours, like that's, it's an, it's an order form. The third 
is you need a delivery asset. This is how they actually get the product, okay? So maybe it's a membership area. Maybe it's a phone call. Maybe it's a Zoom room like this. What's the delivery? How is it getting delivered? The fourth is the follow-up asset. The follow-up asset is emails, it's texts, it's messenger. It's some way to reach them if they didn't exactly buy that first time or if they did and you need to give them a message. And then the last asset, which is the one that, you know, Pete tackles all the time is traffic. How do you get in front of the right people? The traffic asset. And you can have basically an unlimited amount of traffic assets to your funnel. You can be on stages. You can, you know, you can run paid ads. You can do public relations, PR media. Okay. So if you have these five, these five assets, you have a digital sales funnel. It can be built in all kinds of tools. So what I want to talk about with you today is sort of sales funnels exposed and reimagined because some of you said that you just had some kind of negative connotations of sales funnels, right? I saw some of you say like 8 million upsells, you know, you're in there, you're checking out and like, you can't get out of the funnel, right? It's just like, buy more, buy more, buy more, buy more, right? Uh, some people would say that they're kind of slimy or that they sell things that are kind of you, you get to, you get the stuff and you're like, ah, this isn't like an overpromised and underdelivered. Sometimes it's like a bait and switch, right? You think you're buying one thing and then you're actually buying something else. And the reason why sales funnels have gotten kind of a bad rap is because as the market has matured, there has been this movement, which is now changing, but there has been this movement to remove ethics from marketing. And so a lot of these sales funnels were really big money grabs by people who don't actually want to change the world, people who don't actually have a mission. They saw the dollar signs and they went for it. And so we end up getting just sort of this kind of bad taste in our mouth when we talk about sales funnels, but they are so powerful. They're unbelievably powerful. And with great power comes great responsibility, right? And so if we can take marketing and ethics and we can put it back together, we can sort of put away some of the things that we think about around sales funnels, too many upsells, you know, slimy, doesn't sell the right stuff, they're ugly, you know, all that kind of stuff. And we can reimagine them for our business, for 2021, for 2022, for smarter customers. So um, that's what I want to kind of go over and sort of the three things the three things that are changing about customers and sales funnels that we are seeing at Funnel Gorgeous that should probably get you guys excited to use funnels in your business. So the first is that we are going to reimagine sales funnels today need to be clear more than they are clever. If I said to you, go down to the store and I need you to go buy some bait because I want to go fishing. And there's a bait and tackle shop on the outside. And then you get in and they're selling lingerie. You're going to be like, what the heck? Like, right? Like total bait and switch. <laughs> and this, is what, this happens all the time in funnels. But customers are getting smarter. They're getting so much smarter. So what we're seeing is that you don't have to be clever. You do not have to be sneaky. You don't need some like magic copy. You need to be clear, okay? Um, and so they want to know three seconds, usually is the amount of time that you have when someone lands on that first page of your funnel. You have about three seconds to get their attention and to get them like in your funnel and reading and hopefully buying. So here's a little game you can do. When you guys go and you write your sales copy or do your video, I want you to give it to a stranger, someone who has no idea who you are, your market. And I want you to see if they can figure out in three seconds what you're selling. If they can't, it's not clear enough yet and you need to go back. And now, even if they can't quite grasp what you're selling, because some of you probably sell like more complicated things, they still should know where you're going with the copy within three seconds. And if they don't, you've got more work to do. Okay, so we are, we are seeing that customers like clear over clever, which is good news if you felt like you weren't super clever. Now, on your sales page, to be clear, these are the things I want you to make sure you include. The problem, 
That's the first thing. You need to make sure that they understand the problem. The second thing that needs to be on that sales page is the solution. Do not hide the solution. Do not be afraid to share with them what the solution is for fear that they won't buy your course or they won't buy your program if you give away. I promise you that I have seen more people buy from me because I give away my information freely than hiding it behind a paywall. So give the solution, tease the solution on the sales page, problem, solution. Tell them why that matters. Why does the solution matter? How is it going to make their life better? So that's benefits. Then go into features, which is what's actually included in your product, and then give some social proof. Make sure your sales page has those five things to be clear more than clever. Your customers will thank you for it. Okay. All right. Number two, in Sales Funnels Reimagined, we are going from pushy, pushy funnels <laughs> uh, to patient funnels. And a lot of people don't like the word patience because patience sounds boring and long and tedious. But here's the thing. This is, this is one of my favorite shifts that I'm seeing in the market. Instead of being like, did someone buy in my funnel or not buy in my funnel? What we're seeing is, did someone buy in my funnel or is someone not yet ready to buy, but still a part of my community? So we're going from yes and no to yes and not yet. I had someone go through my funnel the other day and they wrote to me and they said, Julie, I have been following you since 2016. You do not want sales funnels that make people need a shower afterwards, right? You want people to go through your sales funnel and say, oh, that's amazing. Maybe I can't do it right now, but I'm still going to hang around this person because they seem like they're a really cool person and they have some really amazing things. And so we're going from, if we think about this in sort of like the analogy, if you go to a store, do you like the salesperson that's like right on your back? You know what I mean? It's like asking you a million questions and you're just like, oh my God, let me think. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So sales funnels for the long haul. So what this looks like from a, a technical standpoint is that we use lots of ways to stay in touch with the customer, even if they don't buy. So patience versus pushiness means we understand that 95% of people are not going to buy the first time they go into your funnel. I don't care how good of a funnel designer you are. They're just not going to buy. So we want to go from yes to no to yes to not yet. And we want to invite them to the community. We want to stay in touch with them through texting or through messenger or through social or through email. And so the best sales funnels in, in, in 2021 and 2022 are playing the long game, okay? They are not playing the short game. They are not trying to just, you know, churn and burn, so to speak, right? Okay, so that's the second one. We're, we're going to patience instead of being pushy. The third one I call, we're going from mediocre to mindful, so now I want you to imagine that you're back at that toy store. So mediocre to mindful. You're at that toy store. You've got this toy. In one store you go to, you get to the checkout and there's like alcohol right by the register or maybe like, I don't know, cigarettes or pantyhose or I don't know, something just random stuff that nobody needs. It's kind of, nobody needs pantyhose in my opinion. <laughs> like that was the worst invention ever. <laughs> okay, so it's like, you're just like, oh my God, like, what is all this crap? Like, I just want to check out, like I can't get through, right? That's what happens in a lot of crappy sales funnels. They're just like throwing bonuses at you and stuff. And you're just like, oh, I don't need it. Now imagine you go to a different toy store, but at that toy store, you have right at checkout, you have the wrapping paper, you have the birthday card, you have the batteries for the remote control car you're going to buy more stuff, aren't you? And you're also going to be like, oh, thank you. Now I don't have to go to Walmart and get, wait, you know, wrapping paper and I don't have to get batteries, right? So the, the store owner has been mindful. They have really gotten in your head about what you need when you're at checkout at that toy store. And they're giving you the things that you actually need. This is raising your order value, right? 
And so instead of just mediocre crap, you're just like, you don't even know what you're buying. You don't really need it. You now have mindful order bumps and upsells and things that just actually, you're so excited to buy. You're just like, ah, this is amazing. Thank you for thinking of me, right? Now I wanna just tell you a little story. I have a dear friend, her name is Wendy. She's one of my clients. She makes six figures, multi six figures a year in the craziest market ever. You ready? You guys are never going to guess. I would ask you to guess, but I'll run out of time. She upholsters chairs. I'm not kidding. And she teaches people how to upholster chairs. Her business is called Chair Whimsy. And she runs multi six figure uh, sales funnels, teaching people how to do chairs. And one of the funny things about her sales funnel is, you know, she's teaching you like, okay, you want to like upholster a chair. That's great. Well, you get to check out and the order bump is, hey, do you have trouble picking out fabric? And people are like, oh my God, why? Yes, I do. Right. And then they order that course as well. Right. So that is what I'm talking about, about mindfulness. So when you guys are thinking about your offers and you're thinking about the way that you can solve the problem, think about all the possible like little things around that problem that you could help them with, right? They're going to be excited to buy. They're going to feel supported in their purchase. They're not going to feel annoyed like old sales funnels used to be. And so as you're thinking about your offers, go deep in the problem and think about how you can mindfully and helpfully serve them because people will continue to buy from you until you either disappoint them or you stop selling. There's only two reasons people are going to stop buying from you. So if we have all committed to like ethical marketing around our products, as long as we continue to sell in a mindful way, in a patient way, in a clear way, people will keep buying. And sales funnels are the digital process by which we do this. So that instead of you having to do all the work, one-on-one sales calls, you can have a sales funnel doing these same things. So to quickly recap, because I know I just threw like a lot of stuff at you. Sales funnels are just a digital sales process of what we are all used to in the real world. Sales funnels have five assets to, to actually make a funnel. They have a sales asset, a cart asset, a delivery asset, a follow-up asset, and traffic assets. They can actually have lots of traffic assets. This is what Pete and his team are so good at teaching, how to get that traffic, how to get those eyeballs. Okay, that's what sales funnels are. And we talk about these three shifts that we're seeing in the market, which is clarity in your offers versus being clever and making sure that you are tackling the problem, the solution, the benefit, the feature, and the proof to be clearly selling. The second thing is that we are patient. We are not pushy. We are looking for the yes or the not yet, not the yes and the no. We are in it for the long game. We are reaching out to them in text and email. We are keeping connected, knowing that sometimes the sales process isn't super short and that's okay. And the third shift we're seeing is we are mindful. We are making mindful offers, mindful order bumps, mindful bonuses that get people excited instead of feeling like they're getting mediocre crap at the register. And with those three things, you guys can put aside the idea of what the old sales funnels were like and think about how you can be leveraging these, these smarter customers, smarter clients, and these just better sales funnels where marketing and ethics are connected and where you can feel really, really good about what you put out into the world because it, it mirrors who you are as a person. It mirrors the quality of your product and it mirrors the experience that you want to give your customer. Anyway, you guys, I want to just be mindful of time. I know Pete has an amazing lineup. I hope that was helpful for you. Um, I threw a lot at you, but Pete, I wanted to give everyone kind of a, a big overview. And guys, go check out Chair Whimsy. She's amazing. Go check her out. She's cool. And I just 
I love to share stories like that because sometimes we think we're in a market where we can't make money and she's just killing it, teaching people how to upholster chairs and changing the world uh, in her creativity. And I, and I love to just kind of share that. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I appreciate you again. I'm Julie Stoyan, co-founder of Funnel Gorgeous. So Hey guys, oh, give, awesome. I see you in the chat. give it up for Julie. Come on, backstagers. We got thousands of VIPs in Zoom rooms. Come on, give it up. Let's get her on my back screen here. Get her on the back screen here. So I'm super grateful for Julie being here. We got two final guests, and I'm telling you, the closer today, I know we've had some strong closers, but this could be, uh, and, and right now, Jess, just so you know, this, is what, uh, this could be, the strong, I mean, this could be the strongest close day. You're going to have to tell me. We'll start strong. We'll finish strong. And so I just, I'm, I'm super excited about uh, these last two guests. But Julie was unbelievable. Every single, Julie, you know who the closer is because Julie heard her. And Julie was <laughs> like, man, I want her speaking at my event too. But yes, guys, everybody. My event. <laughs> yes, yes, she's coming. So that's incredible. Hey, guys, can we get Julie out behind me? Okay, they're trying. Well, Julie, I am super grateful. I know that everybody in bronze, silver, and gold that donates this week will get your funnel course. And, right. uh, yeah. and thank you for delivering magic today. I, every single time, it's so simple and so clear. So thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yes, ma'am. All right, guys. Well, hey, listen, um, I'm, I'm excited. We got two final guests here. Two final guests. And they're two important topics. And so my next guest I'm going to interview here, uh, he is a gentleman who I think epitomizes how to build a platform from scratch. He has done two major platforms that he has built. He's worked one-on-one -on -one as a student of Grant Cardone, one-on-one. -on -one. He is now one of our clients that we've been able to help. I know a lot of you aren't going to know him, but a lot of you are going to be inspired by the things that he has done to build the platform. So would you welcome to the stage on the platform tour, Mr. Brad Sumrock. Give it up for Brad Sumrock. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Give it up for Brad. Come yeah. on, Brad. Yeah, let's go. Dude, I'm telling you, he's going to get excited. He was just at Tony's event, staying up till 3, 4, 5 in the morning at <laughs> Tony's events. So I told him, hey, Brad, we're going to put you on at 4 a.m. today. And so I want you guys to see something. Brad is going to talk about scaling your business through mentorship. And I think you guys are going to love something that we're going to be talking about. Grant Cardone is on his way to becoming a billionaire because of apartment investing. And Brad is one of the best out there around apartment investing. He's worked with Grant one-on-one. -on -one. He's worked with us. So Brad, welcome to the platform tour today, man. <laughs> man, I'm so excited. Thank you for having me on today, Pete. Hi, everybody there. So give everybody just a quick little bio of who you are a little bit. Yeah, man. So like, you know, I grew up in Pittsburgh and have uh, not one college degree, but two. I didn't know anything about real estate. I didn't know anything about building the platform. All I knew was to go to college and get good grades. And so I did that. But I struggled in corporate America for 17 years, had six different jobs. And it wasn't until I found about the power of mentorship and leveraging other people to help you grow exponentially, not incrementally, that's when my life changed. So I went to a real estate seminar back in 2001 after reading Robert Kiyosaki's books and boom, oh my God, those books changed my life because all I knew was to be an employee. You see, nobody ever taught me to be a business owner, to be an investor, to do real estate, to start a company. And so I was on that path for 17 years. And then after reading those books, went to a seminar, you know, uh, self-education can make you a fortune. Going to seminars and having mentors <clears throat> is what we call self-education, whereas formal education, going to college, that'll get you a job. And that could get you a good life, but a good life gets in the way of a great life. And so once I found that out, I was able to get into real estate, start buying apartment buildings, 
And within three years of having a mentor, I became a multimillionaire, became financially free, and compare that to like 17 years in corporate America with two degrees. Wow. Brad, so you stepped in. I want to talk about two different platforms you built. The first one has to do with, because everybody out there that is watching is trying to build their platforms, trying to build their platforms. And so the first one you built was you becoming an apartment. Well, first, you tried to build, a, tried to do it the old-fashioned way, which so many people do. And I believe, you know, I, I know the education system has good intentions, but I believe there's a lot of places that it's missing a lot of stuff. And Grant talked about this this week. And so you stepped into a seminar and you started your self-education journey by going into something where there was around apartment investing, right? Tell us that really, like, briefly. Yeah, so, like, you know, I, I read Robert Kiyosaki's books, and he talks about getting out of the rat race, getting out of the corporate rat race, and that's when your investment income meets or exceeds your job income. So, like, I go to this seminar. I'm the most skeptical person there. I mean, I'm thinking I have an engineering degree, an MBA. What, do I, what am I going to learn in this seminar? What am I going to do in this seminar? But going to the seminar just opened up my mind about what is possible. And so I'll never forget day one of the seminar, they talked about single family rentals. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, like if I'm making I was making 10,000 a month in corporate America. And I'm thinking, man, I need to have 50 rental houses just to be able to walk away from my job. Mm. And, and honestly, though, that was day one of the seminar, but I was committed. I went home that night and I wrote out my goals and I'm like, OK, within two years, I'm going to have 50 houses and boom, become financially free. And the next day they talked about multi-unit investing. So imagine instead of having to have 50 homes, you could have all your units under one roof or under one or two roofs. And so I ripped up my goals for single family rentals. And I decided back then, it was in 2001, 20 years ago today, I made that decision to be a multifamily investor. And eight months later, after that seminar, I went out and bought my first investment property. And it was not a single family rental, a duplex, a fourplex, but it was a 32 unit building. And that was my first investment back in 2001. And today, let's fast forward 20 years. So I want you guys to hear this. 20 years, 20 years ago, he spends $10,000 $10, to go learn about multifamily investing. And that's what allows him to start building his platform. His platform was to acquire apartments. We're going behind the scenes of people who have built the most powerful platforms in different industries and different niches. And now you fast forward today, and how many units, how many doors do you open, uh, own across the country? So in the last 20 years, I've owned almost 8,000 doors. Now, I like to buy, hold, and sell within a three to seven year period. So right now, I'm at about 5,000 doors. But over the years, it's been about 8,000 doors. I've sold a bunch of these properties now. But that's just, um, and it's been an exponential ride. It's been an exponential growth. And that's why, like I, you mentioned when you introduced me about, you know, I work with Grant one-on-one. -on -one. Honestly, I don't go to Grant Cardone to learn about apartments. I, learn, I go to Grant Cardone because he thinks so big. Well, you're getting ahead of me now. Now you're getting ahead of me. Now he's getting ahead of me. See, <laughs> he's ready to step into the next phase because if you heard Damon John yesterday, like if you heard Damon John, he has built four different types of platforms, four different types of movements. And so what he thought was going to be his one and only has evolved into a second and into a third and into a fourth platform. But the principles that we're giving you this week with six-figure, seven-figure, eight-figure, nine-figure, and ten-figure business owners are the principles that will allow you to do it over and over, Jennifer, and over, Scott, and over and over again. But what I'm talking about here today falls into the scale pillar. You cannot scale your platform without other people in your life that help you. That's team members, that's strategic partners, but today I'm talking about mentors. So Brad, you then began to grow, you got all these units, you have this desire to start now teaching people. So now you wanna build your educational platform, your training, your seminars, all of that, I'm assuming 
you followed the framework of what got you to build the first one. What did, how did mentorship help you? Because now you're one of the biggest educators on apartment investing in the U.S. and in the world. But you, once again, you're one of the guys that is one of the greatest students that exists. Like one of the greatest students that exists because mentorship means so much. What did you start to go do to start doing that? Yeah, now? that's that's crazy because I when I decided to be an apartment investor, I never thought I would be mentoring and teaching other people. All I wanted to do was become financially independent. And, and I was able to do that within just three years of, go, of being an apartment investor. And then like you said, Pete, if I could comment a little bit, the people that think they need to do it themselves always stay smaller and go slower. So as we scaled our apartment ownership business, it was really about expand, you know, building teams and having all the right team members and the puzzles and the investors and, and management companies and all those things and by leveraging other people. And that's how we grew from 32 units to over 8,000. In 2012, after I had met my wife in 2010, it was a big, it was a big, big moment for me because I never forget how I felt back in 2001 when I went to that seminar. I was the most skeptical person in the room and now we had already helped ourselves. We had helped ourselves become financially free. And so now we wanted to give that gift to other people. I got I to gotta pause him there. Hear this. We had already helped ourselves, meaning they had already overcome. They had already figured something out. Every single one of you have already helped yourself. You've already figured something out. You know how to do something that other people desire to know how to do. Now watch what enters in next. So you've now done that. So we're great at apartment investing, and this is back in 2012, right? But I didn't know anything about speaking and doing events and all that stuff. And Pete, you are doing this back then, mate. And if you were, you probably would have been my, men my mentor like you are now, by the way. But so what did I do when I wanted to learn how to build a speaking and education platform? Well, my simple recipe, I found somebody that was doing it. I found somebody that was teaching people to speak, to put on events, to produce events, to communicate effectively. And, and so I hired this guy back in 2012 because I wasn't needing to learn the apartment business. I needed to learn how to communicate effectively from a stage, online, offline, Zoom meetings, go to webinar meetings, whatever platform it is that you want to do. And so I hired this guy. And I went to his seminar in 2012, Pete, not once, not twice, but like three or four times. And like you said, being a great student, I learned it. And so that's how we got into the education business. Yeah. And so we, we entered into the education business, the apartment investor education business in 2012. Which is something greater than just serving himself. It's serving other people. And he's since grown into 2020 to be one of the largest ones. Before we talk about when we entered in, because we know a thing or two about building a platform, there are several mentors along the way in the last eight years that you've invested into. The Grants, the Tonys, talk about that because mentorship has been a huge part of your last eight or nine years of journey. It's, it's a huge, huge part. I mean, look, <clears throat> if anything I wanna do, anything I wanna do well and become a, an expert at, you could figure it out yourself and take multiple years, or you could leverage a mentor and take that multiple year period and turn them into months. And that's, why, that's what I call it. I'm saying you take multiple years and compress it into months. Okay, so like Tony Robbins is a great example. When Pete just mentioned, we just came back from a Tony Robbins event. But you know, we, me and my wife, we look at like, what do we want in our life? Do we want better health? Do we want a better relationship? Do we want more money? Do we want to be more effective with our education platform? And so we find somebody that's doing it, that has a heart of a teacher, that has proven results. Not only somebody that helped themselves, but has helped hundreds or thousands of other people and leveraged them. So Tony Robbins is one. Um, as a result of me going to Tony Robbins, my wife and I have a what I call a level one outstanding relationship with both love and passion. And we didn't always have that, Pete. Like we didn't always have it. And we just got back from that event. Um, you know, we pay Grant Cardone six figures and we go to see Grant once a quarter. Mm. And, you know, Grant's a great apartment investor, as many of you know, but I didn't go to Grant to learn the nuances of apartment investing. 
but Grant just helps me think 10 times bigger. And so what I found is by the way I think bigger and then take bigger actions, like here's an example. Could I share an example? Yeah. My first meeting with Grant, he said, Brad, you need to do bigger deals. I got really comfortable doing 15, 20, 30 million dollar deals. And so after that first meeting with Grant, I went out and bought a $123 million deal, raised $46 million of equity, and got an $80 million loan. And I expanded my team. I partnered with a bigger company. Um, I got more investors. And now as an educator, I could use that and I could show my mentees how I did it. Mm. And so by having a mentor that's two or three levels above you in terms of where you're at, you know, your net worth, your income, the business that you own, the number of employees that you have, any of those things that I want to do, I just find somebody who's done it and, and have them help me do it. So those are a few of the mentors that we've had. Um, I love that. Hey, I want, I want you to hear something. This, this could be one of the most important statements that I make. Not only do I want you to be that person to other people with your message. That is who I want you to be to other people with your message as you build your platform. I also want you to understand for the rest of your life, you also need that person in the areas of life that matter to you most. If your health matters and you don't have a mentor, I'm telling you your health doesn't matter to you. If your marriage matters to you and you don't have a mentor, I'm telling you your marriage doesn't matter. If, like, really, because you can get stagnant and comfortable and never go to the next level. If your finances matter to you and you don't have a mentor, do your finances really matter? Because all you're doing is staying in your comfort zone. Every year, every year for the last five years, I identify the domains in my life that matter most to me. And then out to the right, just like Brad and Jen do and like Stormy does, I figure out who my mentor is. So for the rest of your life, be committed to being the mentor to other people with the knowledge and the education and the life experiences that you have. But be committed to always having that mentor in your life. Because if not, you get comfortable you get stagnant and you don't grow. And when you don't grow, you're actually dying. You're actually dying. Brad, last couple of things here. So Grant, I think Grant said you got to, I think it was Grant's team that said you got to meet Pete Vargas because, yeah. so you had come to kind of hitting a little bit of a wall with things. So talk about the experience of what we did and I haven't had one testimony up here, although lots of people have spoken like, this is the guy, this is Grant gave me words, like encouragement. But talk about our experience of what happened and even what happened with your platform as we met. Why don't you tell that story really quick? Yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Like Pete hit, a, hit on so many points, like you're either growing or you're dying. You're not maintaining, you know, because, and there's always competition and there's always other forces and then the environment changes and then boom, COVID hits and what do we do? You know, we're doing live events and then all of a sudden the live event business stops, right? So we got to meet uh, Pete through a connection at Grant Cardone, okay? And that's the other thing about mentors is a true mentor is also gonna share, um, you know, I love, I love when I'm a mentor, I'm an open book. I share my Rolodex with my mentees. And so like Grant Cardone, these, see, these, they're some of the most generous people in the world, you know, and, and, and when you have proximity to them, they also share their Rolodex. And so we got connected with Pete and, and I'll never forget the conversation we had with Pete. And here's another thing, Pete, I just want to speak openly. Can I do yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. Like I see a lot of blogs and a lot of stuff online about, Oh, get somebody to help you for free, you know, take them to lunch, add value to them, see what they can do for free. I've never had a free mentor every one of my mentors I pay money for. And I, I, I would just say I wouldn't have it any other way. And you know, like a lot of people come to me now and say, hey, Brad, I'll you know, take you to lunch, mentor me for free. And I'm like, you know what? 
every single per Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone, uh, Pete Vargas, my first real estate mentor, my tax advisor. I was paying 965000 in taxes, and now we pay zero because I invested in that knowledge with, with Tom Wilwright as a, as a mentor. So we were stuck at doing maybe, um, you know, a million to a million and a half every time we would do an event. And honestly, if you would have asked me 10 years ago, if you would have asked me 10 years ago, Brad, you know, you'll do three or four events a year and make a million to win a million and a half an event, I would have been over the moon. I mean, I would have been over the moon, but, but we were stuck at that. I remember four years ago, one of my team members said, Brad, one day you'll do a million dollars in the weekend, in a weekend event. Because we were doing seven, 800,000 and we got over that a million. But here's the thing, we were doing educational events since 2012 when we were growing. We were growing, but we were growing incrementally. Mm. We were growing incrementally. We would do, you know, 200, the first event, then 250, then 300, then we got to a half million, then we, you know, got to 700, then we got to 800, but it took us eight years to get to a million dollars per event. And so I got stagnant and I got comfortable and I thought I was really damn good at what I was doing, I'm being honest. And then my ego got in the way a little bit, thinking again, it's just like, I, it was like the same thing when it, back when I had two degrees, it's like, why would I go to a seminar? What is somebody with a GED gonna teach me? Well, that guy with a GED was a multimillionaire real estate investor. And so we got hooked up with Pete, we engaged you and your team, and I'll, I'll never forget the first event we did with Pete. Was it in March? It was, was in, Mar it in March, March of this year. March this year. Could I say the number? Yeah, absolutely. We did like three and a half million in one weekend, which was like two and a half X of the best numbers that we ever did. And then we did our second event working with Pete and his team in July. And I, I'm thinking if I'm thinking maybe we just got lucky. Honestly, Pete, <laughs> I was like, maybe, maybe we just got lucky in March. And, and then we did another event in July, and we did nearly four, nearly four million, which was like almost 3x of what we've ever done. And so, you know, by investing, and see, this is the other thing, the rich, the rich, the rich invest money to save time. The rich invest money to save time. In the middle class and the poor, they invest time to save money. And it's a huge difference. And so I could just, you know, five, six, seven times over again, how investing money, you know, we, we pay you and your organization money. So, so let's talk about that. Like a lot of people don't realize this. Like I say that we have seven figure clients without getting into all the details. What, what do you invest into our mentorship? Just like at a high level, uh, like, like, like seven figures? Well, we are um, very close to seven figures right now. Yeah. I think we are, I think we just hit seven figures on what we're investing into your organization. But here's the deal. How many of you, could I ask them a question? Yeah, please. How many of you would invest, just say a million dollars, let's say seven figures. I think we're, I think we've invested about a million with your company. It's more than that, but that's okay. So far, <laughs> so how many of you would invest a million to add eight to 10 million of revenue into your organization? If you don't have your hand up, go back to sleep. Go back to, no, I'm serious. Go, leave, leave. If you don't have your hand up, get out of here because you're not understanding the other thing he's doing. A lot of you think it's about the money. He's teaching 500 new investors a time how to take control of their wealth in their life by inv investing in apartments. So the seven or eight million that we've helped them create is translated into hundreds and thousands of new investors that now are investing in deals and taking control of their life. Income, impact. Brad, Last, last thing, or uh, yeah, but yeah, I, I was just gonna say it's 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 not like I love making money like everybody else, but it's not the money; it's the impact. It's the impact. We were thinking small and taking smaller actions, and and by working with Pete and you know the the, the first mentors that I've had, it's like you just you go bigger faster. You just go bigger faster, and you help more people. 
and I see some of my, like some, like I, I was comfortable having 40 people in a mastermind and now we have 180 and I'm just so excited about those 140 new people that through working with Pete, we helped, we're going to help these people. We're going to impact them. We're going to fucking, oh, shoot, I shouldn't have said that, but we're going to move, we're going to move the needle, you know, in their yeah. lives. Yeah. I mean, we're going to, we're going to make an impact and it's not just on them, but it's on their friends, their investors, the deals they put together, their families. If you want to change the lives of not hundreds, but thousands and thousands of people, you got to think bigger and take bigger action and invest in yourself. Hey, last question. Speak to the importance of them being mentors to other people and speak to the objections that they're going to have in their mind of having other mentors in their life. Does that make sense? I, I think so. So and let's I, speak to the first. Yeah. What's going to get in the way of them with get, having mentors in their life? Well, for me, it was two things. Okay, number one was just ignorance. <clears throat> like, like and, and by the way, we've all had mentors in our lives. Maybe you just didn't realize it. Like for me, my first set of mentors were my parents. You know, and, and we're formed, our, a lot of our beliefs and our patterns are formed by the time we're in our early teens or maybe before we're even 10 years old. So, like, I knew I was going to be an engineer by the time I was nine, you know, because I heard that growing up. And so that was my first set of mentors. But, but now when you're an adult, you get to make the decision to choose your mentor. You usually don't get to choose your first set of mentors. Maybe it was your parents. Maybe it was a a parental, a parental figure, like a grandmother, like for my wife, Janet was her grandmother. Maybe it's an aunt or an uncle or a close family friend. Okay. But so for me, it was just ignorance. I didn't understand and even know that, that, that having a, a business mentor or say a health mentor was even an option or being out there. But then the second thing that gets in the way, which is more of a bigger barrier. And I'll say for me is your, is my own ego. Like sometimes we feel like, hey, you know, we're, we're pretty, how many of you feel like you're pretty good in what you do? Yeah, raise your hand, like you all should be raising your hand, but pretty good isn't gonna make a, pretty good is gonna make a small impact. Okay, if you're pretty good, it's gonna make a small impact. And the way we're gonna get better is by working with the best people out there. Okay, so once you realize that you, like for me, Pete, I don't ever believe that I've made it. I always want to grow. And so just by having that desire to, to help more people and to make a bigger impact and to check your ego at the door. And, you know, I have a baby face, like, but I'm 54 years old. And I always used to think maybe a mentor needed to be someone older than me or maybe. But it's like, Pete, how old are you? I don't even know if I know how old are you? 43. Pete's 43. I'm 54. He's my mentor when it comes to building a platform and, and being a, a master communicator and an effective communicator. So age has nothing to do with it. It's, it's you know, you, you find somebody, humbly speaking, you find somebody better than you that has the track record and has the heart of a teacher. Yeah. And Pete is... My mentor, he's got the heart of a teacher. I mean, look at this guy. He's got the heart of a teacher. That's why he's doing this whole challenge. And so by now that you, you, you shouldn't have the ignorance, you know there's mentorship available and just check your ego at the door and just remember you're not serving anybody, including yourself and your family by playing small. Last thing, what's the importance of their message being mentors to hundreds, thousands, hundreds... Talk about the importance of them becoming the mentor with their message too. Well, that's the, that's the best way you can help people. You see, like I, I, I invest in apartments and I might have 40 or 50 investors in a deal, but when I have an event, a virtual event or an in-person event, now it's instead of 40 or 50 investors, it's 400 or 500 people. And in, and in today's times with technology, you could do in-person events, you could do virtual events. And so the ability to communicate clearly what it is that you do, what the ROI is. This is like, for me, this is the juice of my life. I mean, this is what I'm most passionate about. So if you're out there and you're saying, hey, I want to make, how many of you want to make an impact? Say I. 
You know, how many impact. people you want to make an impact, say I. Do you have a skill set, something you've already mastered, say I. Well, becoming a mentor, building a platform, this is the way you're going to make an impact. It's the way you're going to, number one, provide for yourself and your finance, uh, family's financial future, number one. Number two, leave a legacy that continues when you're not here anymore. See, I don't even have kids. And so what's my legacy? My legacy is the people that I'm impacting. Like I see one of my students right here, Sean Griffith, and he's here and I see him, he's waving to everybody. But like Sean came into our program and like I'm helping Sean and as a result, he's helping 40 or 50 investors and his family and friends and children are gonna benefit from it. So like, this is what just gives me juice and passion. So like how many people are excited about being a mentor to somebody else? Let's go. Let's go. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, I love this. I love this man, one of the greatest students out there. Would y'all give some love to Mr. Brad Sumrock? Give some love backstage, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, everywhere. As he does the white boy dance. He's got Let's his go. little white boy dance right here. <laughs> I love it. Give it up for Brad. I love it, man. All right, Bradley, thank you, bro. Appreciate you being a part of the tour. Thank you so much. All right. I'm going to have you snag that for me if you don't mind. All right, guys, this is what I want to do before we bring up our closer. We've had some powerful closers, but I want to, I want to make sure, I'm telling you, tag somebody, share this, let them know. We've had, we've had Emmett Smith close off this week. We've had uh, Floyd Mayweather, Sarah Blakely. We've had Grant Cardone. We've had Damon John. I believe some of you are going to, all of them have been amazing. But I believe some of you today are going to be like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize what I was about to close this thing off. And I'm going to bring this person up here in one second. So you just hang out. Hey, guys, if you can bring my slides up, please, really quickly. I know this, I didn't put this in there immediately. And if we can get these up. I didn't put these in there immediately, but I'm super, I'm grateful. Brad, I, because of Grant, knowing Grant and knowing Brad, am beginning to invest in real estate and apartments. I've always been in single family homes. I'm beginning to invest in real estate. Brad is actually throwing in his $500 course on investing in multi-unit properties to create wealth. You might say, Pete, that doesn't help me with the strategy or tactic around building my platform. Yeah, it helps you create wealth. <laughs> and I asked him to include that in with platformtourcares.com. And I want to remind you guys today, before I bring this next guest up, this is your mentorship package. Brad saw this. Stormy saw this. Like, look, Julie Stowen has been added to the bronze. This one is not bronze. That one's not bronze. Uh, Julie Stowen, uh, this has been added to like look at your mentorship package. Look at your mentorship package. And all of these prices, like this is your mentorship package. You don't have to invest seven figures in me. That's what Brad's invested. It will be plural by the end of this year, plural. Because of understanding the concepts of what our speakers are providing. So all of these prices go up tomorrow. And all of these go away on Wednesday. Like, I can't believe our speakers have done this. Like, these are paid products of theirs. This thing that Stormy and I are about to do, it's going to become her course. Like a course that I told her she's going to be selling for $500 to $1,000. Like, it's going to become her course. And so... Real quick, back up here. I'm almost done. This is what I want you to know. This is the opportunity you have right here to have mentors. And these are all lifetime access. All lifetime access to be able to have mentors. So make sure you go to platformtourcares.com. Platformtourcares.com. I'm feeling this calling. I'm stoked about this next lady. She is unbelievable. I'm telling you, she's one of the best speakers that I've ever heard in my life. And that got validated by my wife. My wife heard her speak on stage and said, she's special. 
She's special because she has a movement that she's fighting for every day. And she's chosen Instagram as a platform that she spends no money on, but has literally created millions of dollars for her and even greater impact. That's her platform. That's her platform. And I'm going to ask her to just talk about that, but I'm feeling something calling, so I'm going to say this out loud. I'm going to ask her to help close us out today with you visualizing your platform and what's possible. She does that in a profound way. I know that's an audible I'm making, but she rolls with audibles. Would you guys welcome to the stage the number one female network marketing earner in the world, somebody that's making a difference deeply in the lives of the black and Latino community and who understands a thing or two about Instagram. Welcome to the stage, backstagers, let her see you. Mrs. Stormy Wellington! Woo! Yeah! Woo, 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 woo. Come on, come on, come on, stand up, stand up, make some noise, get excited, come on, get excited, get excited. First of all, it is an honor a privilege, a pleasure to be here. Uh, some of you all are probably meeting me or seeing me for the first time. Some of you all may feel like, you know, old timers because I've been here. As a matter of fact, Jody V, I know that face. That's that same screen picture that was up last time. So good to see you. Hi, Jennifer, Bernice, Richard, uh, Sylvester, Scott, Sean, was that, Demetria, Brian. Man, listen, it's a blessing to be in an environment that allows you to grow. Like it is a blessing to be in an environment that allows you to grow. And I know that for the past, what, four or five days from the 11th that you will have been getting just fed with so much information from people that are really successful. And I want to tell you that when you learn to listen to the right voices and get the information and implement the information, your life can change like overnight. OK, and I have 20 minutes to bring to you a message that's gonna be formed in like a training, but I promise you it is gonna give you what you need to at least start the process, okay? Understand, I am not a scholar at this. If you think that you can't do it, I wanna tell you right now, I am not a scholar at this. I'm not coming to you from someone, you know, who graduated top of her class. You know, I'm not giving you this training with a lot of book information because I want you to know a little bit about my history so that you can get excited and you can believe that if I can do what I'm going to talk about today and be a multi, 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 multi millionaire, the number one thing I want you to do and drop some fire right now for yourself. All right. I want you to believe in your power as well. So, guys, I dropped out of school in the ninth grade. I never went to college. I had my first child when I was 15. I had my second child by the second man by the time I was 19. I got married at 33 and had my third child and now divorced. I've been from Section 8, food stamps, you know, a lot of things. But I figured out a long time ago that it's not about IQ, it's about I will. It's not about being the smartest person or graduating with more degrees than a thermometer, okay? It's about having a desire to do something that probably has never been done. Now I'm gonna ask you to do something because I just believe in all fairness. And in all fairness, if I have to stand up, I think you should stand up as well. But I really want you to stand up. And I want you to stand up and I want you to think about this message I'm about to share with you. I looked up the definition of platform because I wanted to know. Because I thought platform was one thing and I was afraid that I was gonna come on Mr. Pete Vargas's platform. Y'all give it up for Mr. Pete Vargas. And I wanted to make sure that I didn't think platform was what I thought it was, and then I'm wrong, and then now I embarrass myself. So at the last minute, I said, Stormy, wait, Google platform. Because of course, you hear platform, and depending on what year you were born, you may think of those big old heels from back in the days. I think that maybe maybe the 80s. You think of platform shoes. When you hear platform, you think of something that you could prop something up on, right? But the actual definition, and this is powerful, the actual definition, and I bet you who, who didn't stand up, you're going to stand up on this one. The actual definition of platform is a raised surface level on which people or things can stand. Platform means a raised level surface 
on which people or things can stand. Listen to me. Instagram is a platform. I have made millions of dollars on Instagram. I sold out an event, a ticketed event in the black and Latino community, a community that does not understand that it's not about traditional education that's gonna make you rich, okay? It's about non-traditional education that is going to make you rich. We have been lied to for a very, very long time. Go to school, you know, all that stuff, White House picket fence. We know a lot of people, and I'm sure, raise your hand right now if you know somebody that went to college, got a lot of degrees, got the husband, the two and a half kids, and they're still unhappy, they're broke, they're broken, and they're probably in the, the ending stage of their lives. And I hate to sound harsh, but I gotta be real with you. I'm 41. I've already lived half my life. Even if I live to see 100, what is my body gonna have the ability and the capacity to do when I'm 82? So I'm taking my young years, and I'm standing on Instagram, where I have over 1.2 million followers. I'm able to reach millions of people every single day like you can because I made a decision to commit to leveraging the platform of Instagram. All right, I'm gonna talk about it a little deeper, but I only got three minutes, but I'm so, uh, five minutes to give you uh, like a good understanding because I want to give you the whole clear understanding and I know Pete and I are gonna partner, we're gonna do something magical and I know when Pete put things together, he wants to give you the whole spectrum. So I'm just gonna give you a little, 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 little like appetizer. You're gonna get the entree when Pete and I come together, I'm sure, for maybe four or five hours to really dive in. But Instagram is a platform. Write that down. It is a stage. It is a platform where you get to turn your mess into a message, transform somebody's life with an authentic message from your own personal experience. And guess what? Nobody can take away the truth from you. This is what I love. When I figured it out, I used to be afraid, and what if I mess up? What if I don't say it right? And then I thought about it. I said, you big dummy, you the one made millions of dollars. You the one made over a million dollars a month. You the one made over $12.6 million in the network marketing industry. You are the one that's the best-selling author, okay? You are the one of the best-selling author of three books. You got 34 millionaires and a downline of over 500,000 people from all around the world. How can you mess up your truth? Write that down. So Instagram is a platform. Facebook is a platform. It's a platform. Instagram and Facebook is the largest platforms in the world. Did y'all know about a week ago when something happened with uh, Facebook and Instagram, Mark Zuckerberg in one day lost six, over six billion dollars? And you're telling me right now you can't even find a way to make six hundred dollars on Instagram and Facebook? We have to learn to prepare ourselves for this new world because this old world is about to be non-existent. Here I am right now sharing a stage with people like Sarah Blakely. Hey, you can't tell, I'm on a stage called 360 platform tour, wow. I didn't meet her, but hey, you can't tell me I wasn't. I was on a stage with her. I was on a stage with Floyd Mayweather, hello. $300 million a year man, plus, 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 I don't know, some champion, I don't even know what heavyweight, lightweight, one of the weights. That's amazing to me that I shared the stage with a Floyd Mayweather on this type of platform. This is a platform. TikTok is a platform. Snapchat is a platform. YouTube is a platform. Bego is a platform. What we have to learn to do is, I'm telling you right now, stop making excuses about your age. I heard Brad Shemarok talk about mentorship. I heard him talk about age. I'm going to tell you right now, you probably don't want to get an old mentor. I'm going to tell you the truth. You want to find a mentor that's ageless in terms of their mindset. We got to learn that the rules that we used to live under, like is the New Testament, have you ever thought that there's new rules to how you should live your life? Who would have thought cryptocurrency would be so big in the world? How many of you all heard about Bitcoin when it was $400 and you wish you would have bought at least, at least one? 
He, you know, if you knew what Bitcoin was going to become, really? How many of us would have invested in Bitcoin? Exactly. So what I'm telling you right now is that find one platform that you want to focus on building. Find one. It was Instagram for me. And what you want to do is make up in your mind what is, what is at least one problem your mess can solve. Whatever your message is, normally it derives from somewhere that you found a mess. You found a way to get over that. You may have been overweight and you lost some weight. Guess what? Your message, your teachings, your talks every day could be on how you lost 100 pounds, how you lost 10 pounds, how you lost five pounds, how you, how you quit smoking cigarettes, how you, you, know, you quit alcohol abuse, or how you read one book in one week. Like, it becomes your message. Whatever problem you can solve, because you're adding value. And when you figure out what, that's the first thing that you gotta do, is figure out what is the problem that you can solve. And I don't care what somebody else says, this is where you gotta find confidence. Because nobody knows what you had to do to figure out how to solve that problem with you. They may have told you about the Atkins diet. You may have tried, you know, the no, the no carbs and, the, and then you tried the fruits and, and, and then they said just eat the meats only and unlimited meats and unlimited vegetables. And then you probably found a trick. The trick that you probably found is, yeah, you could, you know, eat the meat and the vegetables. But I also found if you add some lemons to your water, then you get to cut a little bit more weight. Now you got the uh, Atkins diet twist, lemon twist. But here's the key. You got to create results in at least one particular area. Okay. Figure out what that one particular area is. Then you come up with three to five steps as to how you can solve that problem in that one particular area. And then every day you wake up on Instagram, if that's going to be your platform. You wake up every day if you choose Facebook, and I'm going to tell you right now, focus on one. Focus. Follow one course until successful. Find one platform. Go crazy, consistent on that one platform. Start liking people posts. Start friending people posts. Start having pretty pictures and pretty memes and, you know, pretty things. And you should start posting at least six times a day because I'm going to tell you one thing about building a platform. People don't like you to come and go. They almost feel like y'all in a relationship and they want to talk to you multiple times a day. I'm going to tell you right now, you want to build a big platform? Don't abandon your platform when, when times get hard. Don't abandon your platform because you're tired and you want to take a nap. So forget my platform today. I'm not posting today because today I'm off. No, Instagram is my job. I work on Instagram. I don't care what nobody says. She's always live and always live every minute. Well, I make at least 50000 a day. Okay? And that's just in like two of my businesses. And it's because I chose to make Instagram my baby. Me and Instagram, we are married. We, we go together. That's my baby daddy. We got a connection. That's my best friend. Why am I saying that? Because I talk to Instagram like I would talk to my baby daddy. Sometimes I talk that way on Instagram and I talk to the moms who are single moms out there who has pain with their kids and what it feels like to be a single mom because you have to know that people like to connect with you through pain. Pain is an amazing connector. So every post, if you really want to build a real authentic platform with real people, it can't be life is just great every day because that's not real for anybody. So whether you want to get excited or not about this, let me tell you something. The more problems you have and you learn to overcome, the more messages you're going to have, the more value you're going to have. And nobody can deny that I used to weigh 175 pounds. I was 200 pounds uh, when I had my, my, my last child. And I now weigh 140 pounds. And all around the world, within like six months, I made a decision to reinvent myself. And now the world calls me, Coach Stormy, the fitness influencer. How did that happen? I got tired of being fat. I didn't feel good. I was afraid of what it was gonna do to my heart because my mom suffered from heart issues. She had a pacemaker before she passed away. My sister has a pacemaker currently. My mom was obese. My sister is obese. And I'm sorry, I just made a decision. 
that I was going to break that generational curse off my family. And so I lost the weight. And now it was simple. I walk for 30 minutes a day. I take some nutritional supplements to help me to, you know, regulate my body. I detox every day. I wake up in the morning. I have billion dollar mornings every morning. You know, right now it's like just living in like a walking, talking, manifested life because I learned how to have a message that I pull from my own mess. I learned to turn my pain into profits. And then I found something to sell that made sense for my message. See, we also gotta know that people wanna buy something tangible. Though I may sound very powerful and prolific and I have great messages, I sell these great messages. These messages in return are gonna make you wanna click the link in my bio, period. You should want to know who I am right now. All of y'all should be on my Instagram page saying, oh, I'm following Coach Stormy. You know why? Because you want to learn. The best way to learn really is through watching. The best way to learn is through mentorships and something called space repetition. You want to stay on every time you see Mr. Pete doing something. He has a way of developing millionaires and he has multi-billionaire partnerships. And so everything that he does, you're supposed to be like, you know what, I want to be a part of it. If he says, hey, I'm, I'm selling this to you for $2.97 or $4.97, I don't even know what this, this, this thing costs. You're supposed to say, you know what, all that value and I get to own it and I get to take this, this message that I got on this platform called a 360 platform tour and I paid $4.97 or I don't know what it costs, but I I could take it, I could let my kids listen to it, I could let my husband listen to it, I could let my wife listen to it, I could let my business partners listen to it. So it's like, did I pay the $500 or whatever it costs for it, or did I just like make an upfront investment into who I'm becoming? We gotta unlearn some things to relearn some new things. And social media is the way of the future. I'm telling you right now, I am telling you right now, I am telling you right now. You cannot play. When I think about what's happening, even with COVID, it's like all of us who are conscious thinkers, we had to make up in our mind. Because I learned a long time ago that successful people create conditions in their mind in order to succeed. But how about right now? There are people living in fear. They afraid to go see their grandmothers and their grandmothers saying, you can't come see me if you're not vaccinated. And like, who would have ever thought that we live in the land of the free, the home of the brave and all of these things. And now you're like telling me I can't come to work if I don't get vaccinated. And then I may get vaccinated and you may fire me. Hold up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't want the vaccine or I did get the vaccine and my cousin got the vaccine. My cousin still got COVID and I don't want the vaccine because I don't know what it is and I can't have no freedom. And then I get the vaccine and then you fire me. And now I got to live with that thought process subconsciously that I did something that I didn't want to do that was against my will all because I wanted a job when all y'all should be thinking is how do I build my platform so nobody can tell me what to do with my time, with my health, with my family, with my decisions ever again, because I want to be free. That's the way you got to think about this platform. You invest as much as you can. You want to make a million dollars one day? Find a way to invest a hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in your mind. Find a way. I'm telling you right now. When I made up in my mind that I was going to be a millionaire, and then when I made up in my mind that I was going to make a million dollars a month, I started to find ways that I could invest in myself and the connections. You want to make a million dollars a month? Throw me it ain't gonna come for free. It's gonna come with a price. Instagram. Facebook, TikTok, I, learned, I heard Brad say something. I, too, made an investment in Pete's program. Why not? I want his connections. I like how he talks. I like his results. I watch him with his family. I see the results he gets from other people. Do you think there is a price for that type of knowledge? You're working with multi-billion dollar companies. Do you think it's not a price to cut the line? And I had to tell myself, Stormy, stop thinking that things are supposed to be for free. You got things for free. That's why you was on welfare and food stamps in Section 8. Mm -hmm. Look where that landed you. Mm -hmm. So do you really still want free information? Look where free information had you. And I made a decision that I wanted to be in front of people like you, Bernice Hibbert. Smile. 
I want to be in front of people like you, Scott Hoffman. I see you paying attention. I appreciate you. I want to be in, people, in front of people like you, Brian Lovering. I see you, Nancy, uh, Nancy Howard. I love it. Yes, we're never too old to grow. It ain't over until I'm dead. Hey, the race was not given to the strong, strong nor the swift, but he who that endured to the end. I see you, Rue. Exactly, Nancy. Come on, Chris. And so, guys, listen. This platform that you have been introducing me on, I'm very grateful for the platform because I believe that something woke up on the inside of all of you from every speaker. But I know that something special had to wake up on the inside of you because I know when you look at me, I want you to see that I'm self-made. So I use Instagram. And if I can use Instagram to build a multi-million dollar business where I've coached 34 families, to millionaire and multi-millionaire status. I've been invited to places that I would have never been invited to if I didn't understand how to figure out Instagram. And I wanna tell you, when I got my first Instagram page, my daughter got my Instagram page for me. I didn't believe in Instagram. She started it for me. As a matter of fact, weirdly enough, Stormy Wellington, my name wasn't even available. She the one gave me the name Coach Stormy. And I wasn't even a coach then. The truth is, the name she gave me, I had to figure out, and I believe subconsciously, I figured out how to grow into the name because I did not want to be a fraud. I wanted to really live up to that name. And so I want to encourage you guys, as I got on red, today is a new day. Today is October the 16th. I want you to say to yourself that today I'm making a stance. I'm going to figure out how to create my platform in a way in which people will receive and understand my message because it's going to come from me and it's going to be authentic. I want everybody to stand up before I leave because I told myself I was going to get a standing ovation. And so I want y'all to stand up, but I want you to stand up really because the definition of platform is a raised level surface on which people or things can stand. Mm -hmm. These platforms that we're able to build because of the internet, because of Instagram, because of people like Mark Zuckerberg, innovative thinkers, we're blessed to be able to meet people all around the world. And I want you just for one moment, just to, I believe in the power of imagination. If you look at that word imagination, take the first half, image, the other half is nation. What you see is what is creating your world. I want you to close your eyes. Image, nation, your image, how you see yourself, what you see yourself as, who you believe yourself to be is creating your world. Once you start to believe in yourself again, eyes closed, and you start to see yourself in the future, You're going to start to attract the right things, the right products. There has to be a product to sell. But once you start putting yourself out there, you will find that product to sell or that product will find you. So I want you to imagine you start showing up on Instagram, Facebook every day with whatever your message is, whatever you feel is the value that you can add. And then you got 20 followers when you first start. And then you got 50 followers in one day because you say a message to them about how you overcame just, you know, depression from yesterday to today. You feel like a new person. and You start teaching them that. And then every day they start sharing your messages. And then you look up and you go from 50 people to 500 people. And every day, no matter what, like clockwork, I don't care if you're happy. I don't care if you're sad. I don't care what's going on in your life. You decide that, you know what, I'm going to be consistent. And every day you show up. And then you get 5,000 followers and 10,000 followers and boom, you find a product to sell. And by this time you done transformed mind. Your mind is different. Your body is different because you might have transformed physically and that product falls right in line with who you are today. And now you got your bio set up in your link and you look up and people just start clicking the link in your bio, buying your book that you wrote, your, your uh, uh, downloadable ebook. They buying it for $5. You put the book together in, in 30 minutes. Then you got a book teaching them on how to overcome depression in 24 hours, how to get out of your, out of your head and into your life. And boom, they start clicking the link in your bio to buy that. 
And then you didn't stop smoking cigarettes. You create an ebook on the five steps to stop smoking and you use your name, Nancy Hollowell's Way. And then you sell that ebook for $50. And then you keep selling and selling and selling and selling and selling. And you're not selling. All you're doing is using your platform as a tool to heal yourself. And it now becomes an ATM machine. It now becomes a message that people all around the world are calling your name, asking you to, hey, can you come speak here? Can you come speak there? And you didn't realize that all along, your mess was designing you to create a big old message. That's what's, what's gonna make you more money than you ever imagined. And all you had to do was decide within your being that you was gonna live in your imagination and that you was gonna show up every single day. And just like that, your life has changed. I want you to open your eyes and I want you to say to yourself, I am committed to this change. I am committed to this change. I deserve freedom. My family deserves the best. And I don't care how hard I thought it was, I'm going to figure this thing out every single day, one step at a time. So listen, it was a pleasure being here with you all today. Pete, I cannot wait until you let me know what are we going to do, because, you know, I'm itching to give them all the steps on how to do this and how to do that, but I can't. So y'all give it up for yourself. Come on, drop me some fire. Get drop you some fire. fire. Drop some fire for yourself, because you are committed to the next stage in your life. I love you guys. Hey, listen, we're not done. She's going to be backstage with us just for a few minutes because Trent's over there on the other stage, so she's going to be back. Now, check this out. This is what we're doing, and I'm so excited about this. Stormy has, like, 1.2 million followers. Yes. You have not just built your network marketing company. You've built your coaching program. Yes. And you've built your event. Yes. All yes. through Instagram. All through Instagram. And you've spent a lot of money on paid advertising. No, I don't do paid advertising. None. None. Now, I, I want her to do some because I want her reach to be, but you got to understand, she's done none. None. So this is what we're doing. We are, I told her, like, everybody needs to hear about how you do Instagram. There, are, there aren't people doing Instagram like her. Remember how Garrett White at the front end of the day said, tell your truth, be honest, share your messes, share your powerful things? That's what she does every day on Instagram. And I told her she's got to have a course that she's going to take into this world. I was just about to say, like, there's a real strategy to the way that I do it. And... You can't just do it anyway. That's right. If you try to do it any kind of way, you may get a bunch of followers, but they may not spend money. Mm -hmm. The key is to get real followers that believe in you and want to spend money and invest. You just don't want a million followers and no, and I'll have a million dollars in the bank. Yeah. So that's what I'm looking forward to doing, really teaching the like six to ten steps to really building a profitable, you know, whether, whatever it is, whatever you're selling, whether you're selling Tupperware, or you're selling clothes, T-shirts, or network marketing, the strategy, philosophies, is congruent all across the board. So check this out. This is the only person we're doing this. I am a major believer and advocate in her and what she's doing in this world. Same with Brad right before this. Like, I'm such a big believer. And so Stormy and I strategized. We are going, she is going to shoot her Instagram course for everybody that's contributing at the gold level, which the gold level gets you everything everything from all the mentors this week, all of them, we're going to shoot her course live that is going to sell, mark my words, thousands, if not tens of thousands of people will buy this course, probably for about $500 to $1,000. We'll work that out. We're going to figure out what she's going to sell this course for. We're going to shoot it live for everybody that's making a decision in the gold package, meaning we're wow. producing a course that's going to let people so master So they'll be it. founding members. They'll be founding members. They'll get to be there live wow. so you have energy that I day. Like that. I, I like that. I want you to that. have that energy like that. that day that we I shoot like it. That. And then this course will be taken out to, I'm telling you, I, I say thousands, tens of thousands of people will buy this course. And so you'll get to see the behind the scenes of us shooting it live. Not me. I'll be producing it, directing it. I'll do it in my 360 studio. Yes. And we will shoot this course. It will be unbelievable. Maybe we'll build Stormy Studio in Miami Come and, on, and, shoot, and shoot it there. Yes, that sounds like a plan. So, y'all heard that? Yes. Yeah, y'all heard it. So, Stormy, stay around. You're going to be backstage in about three minutes okay. with us. Hey, guys, give some love to Stormy Wellington. Come on. Get on your feet. Yeah. Yes. Yes.
yes, did I tell you you were in for a treat? Did I tell you you were in for a treat? Yes, no, Ricardo, it's incredible. Like incredible, incredible, incredible. So here's what I want you to know. Last piece today, I'm closing out, I'll be done in three minutes. Number one, tomorrow, Bethany Hamilton and Tim Tebow. Tomorrow will only be about 90 minutes long. It will be our shortest day of the tour. I'll be back in Colorado at our studio for 90 minutes tomorrow. Monday, block your calendars because the number one thing that gets in the way is you. I have 10 of the most powerful speakers on Monday that are gonna help you get out of the way of you. People like Nick Santo, Amy Purdy, Gloria Mayfield Banks, Alex Moore, I mean so many people, I shouldn't have started that, Jim Quick, New York Times bestselling author, Jim Quick. Like, we are gonna have a power pack Sunday and Monday, and then on Tuesday, Monday, there will be no recordings, but Tuesday, I will recap all eight days in 60 minutes with the biggest nugget from all 40 speakers in 60 minutes and have you walk away with your plan of how you're leaving this tour and the things that you're going to focus on. So that's what's coming up. Just as a recap to today with the slides, guys, I'm excited because Brad has included something, but just like I mentioned around Stormy, Stormy's, we're gonna do that for the master class for our gold folks today. Listen, we've had people, I know Trent wasn't here, I'm gonna try to get him on Monday. Trent has had some things, he's on stage right now, but we tackled a lot of stuff today. We covered a lot of ground today. We covered a lot of ground today. I wanna to talk about our homework winners. Let's keep it all on the main screen, guys. Our homework winner for day five, I wanna congratulate our Vela Williams Roberts, who literally talked about what she's committed to. What she's committed to. So her, Antoine Wingfield, and Cassandra K are our homework winners for today. For today. Like I told you, tomorrow, I want to note, I want you to do homework tonight, and I want you to use the framework that Garrett talked about. What, why, the lesson you learned, and how you're going to apply it from today. The what, what was the speaker, why did that resonate, what's the lesson you learned, and how are you going to apply that? I want to see you do it via video, or you can write it, but I would like to see you via a video. Via a video. Remember, tomorrow night, these three go up. All three of them go up tomorrow night in price, and they go away on Wednesday. Bronze, silver, and gold. The PhD to building your platforms with mentors who know what they're talking about. Stop talking yourself. Stop lying to yourself. Stop talking yourself out of something. Stop being afraid and step into this greatness. And I want to share this. What we will do at Platform Live is what we will do is we will award all of the checks at Platform Live. But my team said, why didn't you tell everybody what you said about Platform Live? At Platform Live is where we will build your customized plan for building your platform in 2022. Your plan for building your platform in 2022. So if this platform tour is about a lot of incredible nuggets and a lot of information, this is about taking it all and building your plan. And that's where we will be donating back to Floyd and Emmett and Grant and all of the organizations, Maloof Foundation, all of the organizations. That's where we will be cutting checks at that. So make sure you go to platformtourcares.com. It has the breakdown of everything that's in every package and make that investment in yourself and simultaneously know that you're also investing in these charities. So tomorrow, tomorrow the triple P 
is going to be here. Daniel Grothy, Bethany Hamilton, Tim Tebow will be joining me tomorrow. I'm so excited. Make sure you let everybody know. Share it. Tag it. This day will be an incredibly important day for the growth of your platform. So I will see you all tomorrow, except for those people that are staying backstage. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, all right. Let's get Brad and Stormy out here. Yeah. And, and y'all can keep it rolling. You see, this is real, guys. I'm just kind of... Let's get one more uh, bench out here. Hey, let, hey, get your questions ready because Stormy goes back on stage in a minute. Hey, let's get Stormy first, and then I'll have Brad. Let's get Stormy first, and then I'm going to have Brad. And so, hey, listen, I, I'm telling you, uh, and y'all can bring a, a, like Platform Tour Cares or Platform Tour back up there, but that's who's tomorrow. Hey, guys, we all get backstagers. I know we have thousands of backstagers. We only have a couple of our Zoom rooms. Can y'all give some love to Miss Stormy Wellington? Miss Stormy Wellington, give her some love. Stacy, Stacy, come on, Stacy. Yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. There you go. Uh-oh. You see Scott dancing? I see him. He's kind of got, yeah, he's got that Brad Sumrock dance. That, 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 that Brad, so yeah, I like it, Scott. I like, yep, yeah, yep, yep, yep. Hey, so I want to be able to, ooh, that's a cool shot. Ooh, that's a cool shot of us. Take a car, you got it? Hey. <laughs> I got to tell you something about her. I've been able to help her in building her platform, but she's also been able to help me. You know where she's challenged me? She's challenged me in two areas, in powerfully. Like, if I'm going to have longevity on this earth, my health has to be strong. Exactly. I'm 20 pounds lesser than when Stormy first met me. 20 pounds lesser than when Stormy just met me, or when she met me.